Hey guys, Fia back at it again with another Twitch VOD. Uh, today was a bit of an interesting one. I actually started stream completely barefaced. So yeah, okay, this is this is kind of spoilers. But <laughs> uh, we went through and did hair, makeup, and, and nails um, on camera, and it was it was really great fun. This was a redemption from last month. Uh, this is the 27th of May, by the way. Uh, so in, in April, we had a hair, makeup and nails redemption. And, and this was the fulfillment. And I had an absolute blast, despite some tech issues. There are some hiccupy sections in the, in the middle there. But uh, you'll know when you get there, trust me. Uh, but that's all right. We still had a blast. If you'd like to catch us live, you can do so at twitch.tv forward slash Fiyama. Or you can tack on and you can tack on slash schedule to the end of that to see when I'll be going live in your time zone and what we will be streaming. Uh, if you'd like to catch some behind the scenes goodness, you can do that on my social media, particularly on Instagram. I would absolutely love the followers on Insta as well as Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, and you can join us in Discord as well. Links to all of those plus some affiliate programs. We did mention quite a few affiliate things during the stream because there's a whole lot of interaction with those brands. Uh, but all those links are down in the description box below, just in case you were curious. But enough for an intro. I hope you enjoy the VOD and I really hope that I'll see you in chat next time. Hello. What? There we go. Greetings. Oh crap, hang on, let me turn captions on. Start captions. Brilliant. Hello. Hello. Welcome. I have no makeup on. It feels weird being on the internet without makeup on. <laughs> See what I mean about my eyebrows just kind of disappearing into the nether? Yep. That's a thing. <laughs> well done, Landa. On first. Zam missed out this time. It was awful close, though. Awfully close. Well done on second. Hello, Rel. She's in more getting ready. Hello, Lucky. Super hype. Yay! I'm so glad you're hype. I'm I'm kinda hype too. Like this is this is another one of my passions. Uh let me get cracking on uh the battle. This is oh, I can see my mouse now. Okay, good. Cause I have <laughs> like right here, I have this like mirror. Yeah, this is this is what I use when I'm getting ready. So I have it here so that I can actually see it. and I've just got it like just out of camera view. So <laughs> the setup, it's precise. Um what am I going to my keyboard's over here. Tanks. I need tanks. All right, where's my cursor? There's my cursor. That's a tank. You can go there. Look at me go. I'm so talented. There we go. Oh, you can see it on the... God damn it. How far would I have to... Oh, that's not... Yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. I might just have to... I'm absolutely going to have to shuffle things around as we transition between the different things we're doing and stuff. But it's... Look, it'll be fine. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. Um... <laughs> He's able to go... Zam didn't get first. How interesting, how interesting. Hello, you got second this time. You did, Zam. That's okay. That's okay. I'm doing very well, Lucky. I hope you can say the same. It's a good pizza. I like pizza. I like pizza. Still work from home. Virtual dreams were cancelled. Organized in the office. Ooh, working the next hour. Bugger. That's okay, Rel. The last week, so much to worry. Yay, amazing. Happy birthday, enjoy the celebrations. Hello Rel, hello Lucky, hello Nano. Makeup time, Scooter, it is indeed. So there's still a little, I know, it, isn't it? It's a bit odd, isn't it? Like when you usually see me versus like now. Makeup does a lot. Like I'm, I'm working on some Instagram videos, not reels, but like posts for the, you know how I have the mount makeup thing, right? Well, I've been recording doing the mount makeup like almost all of this month. So um, I'm trying to like work on some posts that'll go on the Instagram where it's like product on the face, product on the face. Is it like stepping through like my process, which I'm going to go into obviously much more detail here. Uh, and those little clips, like at the start, having like the full face, like this is what it's going to look like. And then this is how we get there. No makeup. Like the jump is, it's a thing. It is a thing. Like makeup is to me, 
what makeup is. It's a product that I can apply to my face to just to have fun with. It's like paint on a canvas or polish on my nails, powder on my face or liquids or creams or gels, whatever the hell they come in on my face. It's just something. And then you can just clean it off at the end of the day. So if it if it didn't quite work the way I wanted it to, pff, doesn't matter. Oh, I can just not take it for it. Shadow, thank you so much. Much appreciated. Just popping in for a minute. That's okay. Hello, Shadow. Thank you so much for the resub. And congratulations on your six-month subversary. Enjoy the new sub badge. Yay! I hope you're having an awesome day. But yeah, it's like I can put stuff on my face and have fun with it and experiment. And if I don't like the way it turns out, if I'm like, ooh, that was oopsie, I've learned a new thing. I've learned something about my face or about a product or about color theory or I've, I've learned something. And I just don't take any photos of it and then wash it off at the end of the day. Like, it's it's no big deal. But then occasionally I put something on and I go, oh, oh. That looks really cool. And then I take 70 million selfies uh, so <laughs> and put them on the internet. But no, mu uh, music, gosh. Uh, makeup is, it's just so much fun to play with. So much fun to experiment with. And um, it, it's another way of expressing yourself. You know, you you choose the clothes that you put on your body uh, to, to express a part of yourself that people can't see otherwise. You can do your hair. Uh, whether that's coloring or putting things in it like clips or hair ties or scrunchies or whatever, or um, just by styling it, maybe you've got it up like I've got it now, or, or it's down or it's in a ponytail or it's in pigtails or, or some elaborate braid um, or braids, plural. Um, it's another way of expressing yourself. Makeup is the same thing. Makeup is just another beautiful, fun way to play with color and shape and 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 expression so yeah i i do enjoy makeup as evidenced by my very well okay it's sizable to me and it would probably be sizable to most people but it is it's a hobby so it's you know i'm sure everyone has that hobby that they feel like oh my goodness i have so much stuff related to this hobby but it's fine because it's it's fun you have it and it gives you joy so there you go. Uh, hello, Land. I am rather than oh, Thank you. Um, I'm going. I'm going pretty okay. I had. Um, I had a very large decision to make today, and that decision has been made. Um, the stress of that decision. So, um, actually, I was. I was planning on talking to you guys about this today. So this is probably a good time. To do it i'm gonna see if i can get it under 60 seconds so we can clip it but it probs won't be um so there have been some changes in my day job and those changes uh have resulted in them asking me to step up my hours and i have decided to do so um the other option was to not step up my hours and stick with what i'm currently doing and there was a very good potential that if i chose that option the business would still need somebody in my role who could give up those who could pro pro like you know provide those hours and so there was a very good chance that once my contract was up it wouldn't be renewed and i'd be out of job uh i i know you guys all know that i want to stream as a full-time career one day uh but i'm not yet in a position where that that's a viable thing. And so I can't afford to lose my job just yet. <laughs> um, it will not change my live hours. The one, like I, I had a couple of non-negotiables, but the very first thing I told my manager when I gave her my answer was, I am not changing the hours that I go live. Whatever I give to you guys, whatever I give to the company must be around those hours. That is non-negotiable. And she agreed to it. Um, I was streaming before I got this job and she's very supportive in my endeavors and gets really excited with me when I've got new things to work on and all this kind of stuff. So she's she's really, truly awesome. Uh, and so she very much understood that this is very important to me and that I was not going to do anything that would damage this. What it does mean is that I may be, I might take a couple of extra days to reply to comments on socials. Um, I might not, not that I'm very active in Discord anyway, but I might be even less active potentially in, in the Discord. Um, you may hear, you may start hearing, like if there are announcements 
to be made that aren't like announced on stream worthy. Like if there's changes to be made and things like that, you may hear them from mods, particularly Jas rather than me. Um, if I don't have the time to like put the stuff together to, to that kind of thing. So um, it's, <sighs> I'm stressed. I don't know how this is going to go. I'm not sure how it's going. I'm, I'm genuinely, I've never done this before. So I'm, I, I've never been this far in my streaming career. Um, and yeah, so it's, I'm not sure how it's all going to work out. That is also why I bit the bullet and bought the laptop earlier this month, because uh, I, I was asked this question a month ago. And so I've spent a month looking at my, my business and seeing what I, if anything I could do. Um, it also means I won't be working purely from home anymore. I'll be working from the office uh, a bit more, like more because <laughs> I don't at all at the moment. So I will be working from the office. Um, so it is a really, 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 really big change for me in my life. Um, so I don't know how it's going to go, but I got some advice from people I trust, um, some advice from people who have my best interests at heart. And um, one of the big things that really kind of what I took away from that advice was that um, I, I have two choices. Like the, the, I can either do the thing or I could not do the thing, but there are other choices out there as well that I hadn't thought of. Like I could find a different job. Um, but knowing my situation and its particulars, it probably wasn't going to be very easy to do. Um, and I also, just because I'm agreeing to this doesn't mean that it's a lifelong commitment. I'm not getting married. I'm not, um, you know, th this is not, I'm not being bound by blood to the, to the company or anything like that. This is like, um, we've got a half the year to go roughly a little bit more than, uh, and that's when my contract is due to like, so I get a year to year contract every, at the end of each year, my contract is renewed. Um, so there is a chance by the end of this year, when my contract is up for renewal, that A, I, I can't do it. It's, you know, it's been seven months of hell and I just can't manage, I can't make it work. And so that's a, there, you know, a good point for me to make a decision. I can't do this anymore. Or it could get to a point by the end of this year where I can actually go full-time streaming. And so I can call it off there. Or it could be wildly successful and having that break from like, you know, putting more into the day job and like, it could work really well for me. And it could give, like, I could learn more from the business side that I can apply to my streaming, or I might make more connections who can help me get ahead in the streaming business. Like there's, who knows? The, the only way to know is to wait it out, to try, and to obviously give my all to the stuff that I'm doing, obviously, um, but also to just give it a shot and see how it goes. So I'm relieved that the conversation has been had and that the decision has been made and that I now know what my life is going to look like at least for the next few months. Like I have more, I have a bit more certainty back in my life, but I am also, yeah, it all, it's, it's a little, it's a bit bittersweet because, um, this is, this is my passion and this is, um, and her, and taking a day worth like, you know, eight hours worth of work away from it a week. Cause it's literally, you know, that's, that's what's happening. I, I don't do anything other than work essentially. Um, it'll be interesting to see how it goes. So that's a very in-depth rundown of how I am. <laughs> Tell me how you guys are, what is going on in your lives, your worlds, all that kind of stuff. But I, yeah, I wanted to let you know, because you might notice a few changes and be like, what is going on? Why isn't Fia telling us this? That's why. Um, I'm making some, I'm, I'm, I'm going through some life changes, but yeah, that's, uh, it's going to be a ride. It's going to be fun. Um, a respectable tiny hand mirror, giant closet door, nothing in between. I have the mirrored closet doors. I have this. Uh, this is actually my birthday present from Jazz, and I love it so much. Uh, I also have this very, whoa, very dirty, very grimy. Um, can you like that's disgusting? Uh, you can probably tell I don't use this very often, uh, <laughs> especially since getting this beautiful foldable. It also lights up, but there's an issue with the battery, so I'm not really um, certain on what's going on there. I think Jas is reaching out to them on a, like a warranty claim or something. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty awesome. Um, so my cool drinks, fantastic. There's Shadows Risa, thank you again. I want a girl smoking it. Amazing, Rel. Well done. 
Excuse me, work is going by super fast, thankfully. Brilliant, I hope it's treating you kindly. Ah, that was magic, but I got rid of most of it. Huh? Rid of most of... I think I've forgotten what we were talking about nearly 10 minutes ago. I mean, when do I ever remember anything? But, uh, yep. <laughs> um... So do do stuff. Yeah, I can get that. Ex right? Yes. Absolutely. Um... What if you need to be stable and secure? Glad they're supportive. Oh yeah, I hope you settle into new schedule minimum at first. Support and remove. Aw, thank you, Lucky. Thank you so much. But yeah, I've I've 100 percent I've put my foot down and I said, like, no. Um, because at the moment I work Tuesdays and Thursdays, and then I stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So I am picking up another day at work that is a stream day, and I've told them, you get a half day. You get a half day. I'm not working till 5:30 and changing my start time. No. And they said, okay. Sure. <laughs> so yeah, it's, uh, I am like the other hours are kind of fiddled around and that kind of stuff. And I'm also going to be working from home on the stream day that I work so that as soon as my alarm goes off to get ready for stream, I can shut work down and get ready and just that's it done, finished. Uh, and, and I've had that confirmed that that's totally fine and we're going to work and we're going to, you know, just have a play with it for a month or so and see how it works. And if it's not working for either of us, then we're going to have a bit of another shift and just kind of, um, my day job is exceptionally flexible, like exceptionally flexible. So yeah, no, it's, it's really good that I have that kind of support. Um, yeah, it's really awesome. Really awesome. Uh, I'm glad they did away with the blood bags. Oh, uh, fear is a mage, not a warlock. Indeed, it still exists. Companies moved away from that business model. <laughs> no, it's because I'm not a full time employee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, right as you finish explaining something, oh, Nemea, hello. I was explaining that um, my my day job has asked me to pick up an extra day at work. So instead of two days a week, I'm going to be three days a week, which um, I, I've had that. That was asked of me a month ago, and I've had this month to kind of think about it and play around with my hours and see what I can make happen. Uh, and so today was the meeting where I officially said, yes, I'll do it. Um, but I will not change my stream hours. This has to fit around my stream hours. And But yeah, so it was it was really good. Really, really good. Um, oh, I'm tired, even though I only have four hours. Do mostly click home away from moving beverage shop. Toe the toe loops are on. Oh, no, maybe need shoes without toe loops potentially. I don't know. Okay, tomorrow eight hours. Yes. Work my is playable. I never know what that's like. Yeah, it's look. A lot of companies out there are. I mean, obviously it's not the US. Um, it's Australia. We have you know workplace rules that you have to obey. <laughs> um, but <laughs> fancy that. But no, it's a. Uh, not all jobs are as accommodating as mine is. Not all jobs can be as flexible as mine is. Um, there are some there are some jobs where as long as you come in and get your stuff done, they don't really mind when you do it. But then there are some jobs where you have to be there, especially customer facing and stuff like that. You need to be there when you need to be there because they've rostered for the plan. Like they know how many customers are going to come in. They know how many calls they're going to get. They have to have enough people so that wait times. Like there's a lot of jobs out there that are not flexible and that by their nature of what work the work that they do but because my role is very much not like that um there there might even be some weeks where I would work four days that week because there's some big financial thing happening and then like two days the next week or something that's how flexible uh my my job is it's it's really good um but not all jobs can be like that I'm just really great like I'm I'm not lucky per se, but I'm in a very good position, which has enabled me to do this. I wouldn't like the reason I bumped up my stream hours and, and really pushed for this was because I was three days at this job. And then I got dropped down to two days because of business need. And that was a trigger point in my life to get shit done. And here we are. So yeah, it's a, it's a big thing. Big thing. I think your boss is the best since. <laughs> The two loops, the gel loops, then I get, so I don't get blisters in between the toes. Oh, well, if they're hurting, then that's probably not it doing its job. Why do you need gel loops to stop blisters? I just put band-aids on and they're a lot flatter and they don't like, yeah, I used to just like wrap my toes in, in regular fabric band-aids and that completely stopped all the rubbing. That might help. them in a way, getting that water. Yeah, because otherwise oh no that is one that's not a customer facing job that is a customer facing job end of story like you are customer facing 
uh, hospitality, retail, um, uh, most reception jobs and stuff are all customer facing. Um, yeah, one hundred percent. There's there's no <laughs> ums or um, nah. There's no, no quotation marks there. Okay, we're gonna do some some makeup. We're gonna do some makeup. So I wanted to start with makeup because here are the things: doing nails makes them sticky and tacky and stuff. Um, nails are usually that if I'm going to do like a whole shebang hair, makeup and nails, like we are today, nails will be the last thing I do so that I don't get hair in them or like smear them while I'm, t or get nail polish on my face. Very, very rare, but look, or, or bonk them on a, on a makeup brush and get a ding and stuff like that. Nails are the last thing I do so that I can let them sit and not be touched by anything while they dry. Nothing else really has dry time in that way. Um, hair, I do after makeup because once you've done your hair, if you then want to pull it back out of your face, if you've got like parts in your face as part of your, your hairstyle, pulling them back and then letting them fall back forward again after you've done your makeup is going to completely change how it looks. Um, it'll, if you're doing curls, for example, it might straighten them out, um, or it might just like change the part or change how your fringe sits or all that kind of, it's just, it's just not worth it. Um, so hair I do after makeup. So I start with the face. Um, uh, not the hair first. No, not the hair first. Um, finish, go finish anybody. That's, that's okay. Leave a look. Fantastic. Enjoy your look. Hey, a drawer. Welcome on in. Alrighty, so first thing I start with is a primer. Uh, I know that's what, you know, like paint and stuff like that. And it's it's a similar type of thing. This one is from Videl. It's called their Lumilea Primer. This one you can get from Yes Style. Uh, I am a Yes Style affiliate. Um, I do have, I do have a lot of affiliate products that I'm gonna be using today. Not because I'm trying to plug them, but because it's good stuff. Because it's good stuff and I have them in my collection and so we're gonna use them. Um, so this one is from Yes Style. Um, it's Lumi layer because it's got a bit of like a little bit of shimmer in it. There are so many different types of primers. The idea of a primer is that um, it kind of holds back your, it was supposed to kind of help the makeup stick to your face more evenly, uh, help it last longer rather than rubbing off on stuff. It'll preferentially stick to your face rather than onto fabric or, or whatever your hair, if it's in your face, that kind of stuff. Um, and some of them have additional properties. Like I've got a couple that are uh, like, uh, silicon based and they help prevent the oil like there's there's particles in it that will absorb oil as your face produces it so that your face doesn't get shiny it keeps you matte um, other ones have a bit of shimmer in them so that you look more glowy there's all sorts of like there's different ones depending on what you're looking for uh, and then of course there are some basic ones out there as well I just realized my hair is like there we go no this is not gonna work <laughs> hair everywhere and I want to keep it out of my face while I'm doing stuff and things. There we go. All right. So little pump. I'm going to go two pumps because I'm not doing, sometimes I'll do like down my neck and stuff as well, because when I'm putting on my powder, um, I want to blend it. You don't want to like have a line of color where it's like one color and yep. So I blend it down, but because I'm wearing this, I have to use less product. So I just pop this on with my hands. Um, not everyone does. Some people prefer to use, I might have to actually take the headset off for a bit, occasionally. Um, some people like to use special brushes and stuff for this these kind of products because they like to keep their hands clean and that's totally okay. Um, I just prefer my hands. So you can see it's kind of just a little bit like shimmery. It's not, it's not like I've just coated my face in highlighter. But it's, um, it's glowy. <laughs> it's glowy. But you're also putting product on top of that. So it's got to be pretty there for it to um, show through the other product. I'm just going to ignore me. Wipe that on my jeans. <laughs> it's all right. They're going to go in the wash after this anyway. Um, for you just busy life. What? No problem at all. Draw. Not a worry. You don't need to apologize for not viewing entertainment. No, don't stress. Don't stress. So that was video Lumilea primer. Done. Next thing I'm going to do is also prime my eyelids because we're going to do 
um, some eyeshadow today, and it, this does the same kind of thing uh, in terms of, uh, I know it's like icy blue, hey, it's kind of funky. Uh, this does a similar sort of thing as the eye of the face primer, except it also, like, instead of, you know how I said it stops it from transferring and stuff, this stops it from settling in the creases of your eye. So when I'm like this, you can see there's a crease there and then there's like a uh, crease down here and a couple of little bits here and there. And as you, like, as you wear eyeshadow, it's naturally going to settle into those creases. It just, it just does. Um, and so what this kind of stuff helps do is stops that from happening so that after you've been wearing it for 10 hours, um, you can close your eyes and not have like lines of color where your creases sit. Um, so that one is from Almay. This is very old. I'm actually, um, yeah, I mean, it still works just fine, but it's a really, really old product and I'm trying to use it up. So this is the Almay Intense eye color. I don't even know if this is made anymore. I, I do not know if this is a product that you can purchase anymore, uh, but any eye primer will do. Um, I uh, used to use one from Peri Pera that was on Yesstyle, but I think they took that one down. I've also used Shadow Insurance from Too Faced, and I've used uh, eyeshadow primer potion from Urban Decay. Um, and they have been phenomenal. I haven't, apart from this one, which works quite well, I haven't used any like Priceline drugstore level eye primers. So I don't, I, there aren't any I can recommend just yet because I haven't tried any of them out. Um, but this one I've been using for a while now. I'm going to be using it for a very, there's a ton of product in there. Um, this one's designed that you can kind of use it as a liquid shadow as well, but I would not use this as a liquid shadow. It is too thick and creamy. And uh, when you try to put it on so that you can see the color, it immediately goes into your creases. Immediately. Like it's just, it's, it doesn't dry down. So, so, but absolutely using it as a primer like that, perfection. Um, so quiet today. What do you mean, Draw? Are you talking about chat? Is because everyone's sitting back like making notes and stuff. Hot tip, don't tell streamers that their chat is quiet because like it almost comes across as an insult sometimes, but it also, especially those who have like any sort of anxiety around streaming and around it not being good or whatever, pointing out that not many people are talking can give them like proper anxiety attacks. So maybe don't do that. <laughs> uh, powder. Powder is what we're going into next. This one is from Neto, and it is not quite my shade, but it's close enough that I can't justify throwing it away. And I've hit pan. Can you see that little silver shimmery shiny bit in the middle? That's the metal pan that the powder is like pressed into. Um, so they make, when they make products like this, they'll make the whole plastic casing and then they'll make, and they'll make hundreds of thousands of those plastic casings and then they'll make a portion of that in a portion of the, the pans in a shade in shade one shade two shade three shade four shade five and then all they have to do is take one of the pans put it in the plastic casing and stick something on the bottom that tells you which number shade it is so that's that's why the pans are set it just makes it everything easier for them um and i'm gonna use a brush this is Fun brush. Uh, Natio, I think, are either Priceline. I've seen them in, like, Chemists. Not Priceline, but I know Priceline also has Chemists, but, like, yeah. So, I'm, I think this is, like, I don't know where I got this. I've had this for a very long time. Um, and I'm just, I'm trying to use it up because I'm trying to go through. It's close enough to my skin tone that... I can't justify throwing it out, but it's not quite right. So I'm trying to use it up just to get it gone. Cause um, a lot of parts of makeup can be recycled, but not if they have makeup in them. And I don't really want to scrape out the powder and put it in the bin. Cause it's a waste of like good stuff that can actually be used. And I don't really have anyone who's quite this shade in, in my circle, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, we're just getting, and I am pulling this down my neck as well. So that was the, what I was telling you about, like the, the color, the color line. Um, especially when there's just a slight color. This is not going to work. <laughs> 
slight color difference since I'm just pulling that down. Um, but yeah, um, you can also use like liquid foundation and stuff like that. And I do have a couple of those. I just don't use them very often because I feel like there's so much work to get right <laughs> and I don't have time for that. But um, I do want to actually start using them and then like hopefully use them up and make a decision on whether or not I want to have a liquid foundation in my stash. But uh, yeah, at the moment I don't really use them. And this actually has like a decent amount of coverage for a powder. Can you see on camera like the color difference between here and here? Like it oxidizes. Oxidizing um, it's really, really important that when you get color matched for a foundation, like if you're going to a store and you're trying to get them to help you color match, get them to put a thin, like not as in not a thin as in like a strip that's really teeny tiny, but instead of just slapping some on your face and going, yeah, that's about right, get like actually blend it out to see how it blends in and then go and look at it outside in the sunlight because fluorescent lighting and stuff in a store, very, 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 very different than the actual like sunlight outside. Try to pick a store that has an exit that goes directly outside rather than getting them to put stripes on your face and then having to walk all the way through a um, shopping center to get outside. Um, if you've got somewhere nearby that has a direct entrance to the outdoors, that's probably your best bet for getting a color match and let it dry a bit because, uh, there are a lot of products out there that once they're on your skin and mixing with your oils and being exposed to air and all that kind of stuff. Cause a lot of like, especially liquids are in like an airtight bottle, right? They oxidize, which means that they can get a little orange or they can drop a couple shades. Um, they can get a bit darker. Uh, uh, which usually actually, usually like 101 is your ivory, your pure white, that kind of thing. Um, so it would go up a couple shades if you're counting number wise. Uh, but yeah, they can, they can do some things. And I know that this oxidizes because I can see along here, um, that it's just a touch orange. You can't really see it too much on the camera though, which is why I'm using it up while streaming. <laughs> Uh, no, it's also doing time walking. Ah, uh, enjoy. That's okay. You're learning. Nothing wrong with that. Stream Raiders. Brilliant. Wonderful. Okay. Yeah, so that's kind of the, what's that's the first three steps. Good. This is going to take us the entire six hours. Fantastic. Um, that's kind of face done for the most part. Um, the next thing I usually do is eyeshadow. So I think, well, is step one of the eyeshadow. So we'll have to have a look and see. You guys have to give me some, actually, wild stream raids is happening. some options for you to choose from. Not that you can see my eyebrows moving. Oh, you kind of can. Okay, good. <laughs> That's hilarious. But yeah, look, more expensive makeup doesn't necessarily mean better. Um, it can. It sometimes means more research or a greater shade range or stuff like that, um, but not always, and not for all skin either. So like something that is absolutely like a cult classic might just not work for your skin. Um, and that's okay. Uh, Thor, Zem, and Silver, congratulations on your bonus shit, well done. Um, more expensive does not always equate to good, correct Vera? Absolutely, agreed. Um, sometimes depending on your skin, depending on, like, depending on your particular skin, you might need to look at something more expensive because, uh, like there is, there are certain skin types and stuff where, especially if you have, um, skin issues. So like issues with, uh, uh like skin diseases or, um, like 
extreme dryness or extreme oiliness or, or like you, just, just skin issues that kind of, you know, require some kind of treatment, you may need to have a look at some of the more expensive stuff because they've got less filler or less, fewer ingredients in them that may cause issues for your particular skin type. Uh, but most of the time, not all, most of the time, you will be able to find a cheaper product that works. Um, but if you do have like treated skin issues, I definitely to speak to your dermatologist or your GP about wanting to wear makeup. Um, there are there are some brands out there that specifically aim at people who have skin issues. Uh, but just because they do doesn't mean that it'll work for you either. Like it's a whole experimentation thing. Um, best bet is to have a look for retailers that offer really healthy returns policies. Um, or retailers that offer samples, like a little sample pot so you can wear it once or twice and see how your skin behaves with it and then make a decision there based on uh, based on the, the reaction. Um, but yeah, it's very, like all of this is exceptionally personal, not just personal choice, like what you want to wear or whether or not you want to wear it, um, but also like your personal body chemistry. Um, reviews are great but no one's skin is quite the same as your skin. So definitely give it a try, see what you think. Um, you know, swatch a powder in a store if you can, you know, with different restrictions and sort of put it on your face, see if anything happens, just kind of go from there. Um, bare minerals actually can be better. That is what I just, that is what I've heard. Fantastic, yeah. I mean, it might, they, I've got a few bare, bare minerals products and some of them are really, really lovely on my skin. Some of them, not so much. So it's, do you know what I mean? It's very, very, very personal, hey? Body chemistry is fascinating. So fascinating. Uh, hi Spike, uh, my eyes are not green actually, they're blue. I wonder if maybe the lights in the background are I confusing the camera green. somewhat. But hello, welcome on in. Oh my god. X! <laughs> She's gone overzealous to the hydric man. That's fine, Vera. That's X trying to drown me. It happens a lot. <laughs> it happens a lot. Give me a second. We'll stop there for a sec. Okay, you guys have to help me make some picks. Um I've been gonna try creates this a little bit raising away. <laughs> Hilarious. Okay, so I want to wear some Mellow stuff today. Uh, for those of you who are unaware, I am a Mellow Cosmetics affiliate, which means that all of this stuff can be purchased using a discount code. Uh, the code is FIAMA. It will get you 15% off your order uh, and I will get a commission. Um, so, you know, full clarification. Uh, I have also purchased... I purchased a mystery box that had two of these products in it and the other ones have been gifted to me, but not by the company, by you guys. I had them on my throne wish list and they were bought by viewers and then sent to me. So I've paid for half of this essentially. Um, and the other half you guys have paid for. None of this has come from the company for free. I've not received anything from Mellow for free, uh, but I have received commission payments for uh, a couple of purchases. So there you go, just to be totally transparent and open. Um, not chat, just X. Doesn't matter what you pick, you're going, aw, thank you, X, much appreciated. Uh, what's wrong, it's be wrong, they're green. Ah, gotcha, gotcha, yes, they're definitely blue. Definitely blue, I mean, at least they have been for the last 32 years of my life, so there's that. <laughs> um, Ah, uh, yes, Sam, the throne link. Fantastic. My eyes are tricky. They are. They are. They also used to have a little bit of, uh, like, brown in them as well, but that seems to have faded as I've gotten older, which is really disappointing, but that's okay. Right, so we have the treasure chest palette. It looks like this. Whoa. And yeah, there we go. So I'm trying not to, like, blind you with the, the mirror in there, but um, yeah, so it's slightly paler colors. Obviously there are a couple of darker ones down this side as well, but uh, that's what we're looking at for treasure chest. I also have Sinopia. This one is a bit darker, more vibrant, a lot more like warm tones and ready shades and stuff like that. So let me just show you, yeah, the comparison if I can, good Lord. <laughs> I am very, really good at this, honestly. So that's what those two palettes look like. Ta-da. Uh, and then I also have a quad. 
that looks like that. That's upside down. Like it, it looks like, yep, yeah, because of the mirror. Yep, good. Um, but that's a quad there. That's a more like a khaki green sort of shade. Um, and then we have olive and ja whoa. <laughs> jade. So these are both green. One of them is more of a goldy green and one of them is more of like a blue, a blue green. Um, bam, they're like single eyeshadows. So it, it is a gold green, but it looks very gold on camera. And this one looks kind of slate or silvery, but that is actually like a, a green as well. So what do we reckon? What colors are we feeling? You need more hands? I do, right? Like all of the hands. All of the hands. Do my makeup in like 10 minutes flat to go all the different brushes just like everywhere. It'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> it's fear tricky always. Um, more pockets. Oh my God. Yes. More pockets. I got, um, I've gotten a couple of pairs of leggings that I had listed on throne. I got them from yes style and they've got like mesh pockets on both sides two pockets on fucking leggings it's been amazing so good so good like oh uh, it's amazing but yeah that sounds really cool best of luck with it vera i mean is that possible because yes please oh hell is it like oh my god all the pockets amazing yeah check um on my insta Go follow my Insta. Self plug. Woo. Um, <laughs> there's a there's a photo I put up fairly recent. No, was it Insta or was it? It actually it might be Twitter. I don't remember anymore. No, I feel like it was Insta. Mm, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I was like demonstrating pocket on side of pant. It was good. My pockets. It was Twitter. It was Twitter. You can check my Twitter feed. You might have to scroll them or click media and then have a look through there. Lots of selfies, but you can get past the selfies. There's like a photo of, yep. Thank you. God, I look, everything's just confusing. Right. So what am I, what am I using? What, what eyeshadow do we want to see? Any, any particular preferences? Anyone been umming and eyeing about a particular palette and want to see it in action? Um, let me leave some disclaimer looking so plastic in them. I should probably look at next season. Yeah, of course, of course. But like, I was just talking about the pockets. Like, no need to shame for plastic clothing. Like, <laughs> we're all good. We're all good. Although you absolutely can, because I'm pretty sure, um, is it booty? Or maybe it's not me. Because I know there's a bamboo, there's a bamboo, what's it? A bamboo clothing company. I think it's booty, but I don't know. But they've got leggings and they look amazing. But they might be they might be bamboo and something else. But regardless, um, we talked about pockets. Do you like your sweater though? Ah, oh, this is a it's a turtleneck. It's a top, not a it, it, not a not a sweater. But um, yeah, it's super comfy, super comfy. Got it from Yes Style. Good afternoon, Dono. Good afternoon. Welcome back. All right. Um. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Much appreciate. Ooh, actually, I wonder if I have to update those links because they redid their stuff recently. Oh, I this from ah, Meanie, hello! Thank you so much for the resub. Nine months, new sub badge. Enjoy. Enjoy. Just do makeup and nails. You're gonna play some WoW. What does the uh, streaming category say, Ruffle? <laughs> no, we're not playing WoW today. Um, cool. All right. Well, nobody is telling me what they want me to use with the with the eyeshadow stuff. So I reckon we might give Sinopia a go. Yeah, because I'm I've been like, there's there is one shade that is not quite like the others. Uh, in this beautiful palette, and I'm I'm kind of curious to use it and see how it works because I haven't touched it yet. So I think we'll grab that. Let me put these away, or at least out of my way. Blue, I know, right? Blue. Okay, so I'm thinking if I do the blue. Not as like, cause it's a dark color, right? That, that blue is quite dark. So I'm thinking if I do it like on the outside here, 
But then I need something in my crease, which would probably be a matte shade and then something on here. I'm thinking maybe we go brick, cinnamon and blue moon. So this one here, this one here is brick, that kind of, that orange shade. That's also matte. You can kind of, can you tell which ones are metallic and which ones are, are not? Kind of the way that they catch the light just a little bit differently. Yeah, so we'll go, we'll go with brick in my uh, crease. Cinnamon is this one here, which is kind of this beautiful orange e orange brown, I'd say, almost like a copper kind of shade. And then we'll pop blue moon in that outer corner and just see how it works with the oranges, because blue and orange work quite well together. But first, I'm going to use the shade down the bottom here, this pale one, pecan, uh, to set my base. So remember I popped that primer on. Um, popping a skin toned, for me pecan is skin tone, but not, it won't be for everyone, but popping a skin tone shade just lightly over the top of that primer will help it, uh, help other shadows blend more easily because um, eyeshadow will stick to a primer, right? And I'm using a big fluffy brush because I don't really care about, I want to get it everywhere rather than being precise about it. Um, eyeshadow will stick to a primer. Um, but sometimes you don't want your shades to actually stick stick. Sometimes you want them to blend and be have like that smooth transition between skin and color. Um, so popping down a skin toned shadow over the top of your primer can help with that. And before I get into the colors on my lid, I want to do my brows. I always tend to do my base first and then go in and do the brows just to kind of bring a bit of definition. I do look very strange with super powerful brows and then nothing else, but that's fine. That's fine. So to do my brows, I'm using the Mellow Brow Definer. I've not actually used this before, so this would be fun. Space Marine Blue there. Ah, no worries at all. Well, well done. Congratulations. So just using brick in my crease context is important. I mean, yes, just just a touch, just a little. So I've not used this before. Let us see how it goes. So this is a brow pencil. That's nice. So I like to get that sort of shape going there. and then sort of fill it in a little bit. And the color will be a little bit stronger while I'm doing this. And then there's a brush, like a, a spoolie brush on the other end to help kind of brush the color through to soften it out a little bit, make it a little less bold. This is a really nice shade color is this? Does it have it printed on the brow definer? No, but I've got it written down in my- oh no, wait, it's on this- Auburn. It's written on the top of the teeny tiny little cap there. This is the shade Auburn. So it's kind of a- it's brown, but it's like a slightly warmer brown so that it doesn't clash terribly with my- hair because my hair is not cool toned well, I mean it is a cool toned red but um so that's coloring in a brow right the difference am I right or am I right and there's a spoolie little brush on the other end so that was the pencil over there and then the brush here and then you just See how that just kind of softens it out a little? Yes. Yeah, makes it just a, just a tiny bit softer. A tiny bit softer. And then, oh, a bit of fluff on there. Do the other one. I like popping my little finger on my face sometimes to try to steady my hand a little. It's 
especially when I'm making these like little forceful flicky sort of motions. Just makes it feel a little bit safer. Blue's gonna go. Blues are a tricky one to get. I mean, purples are harder, but blues are a tricky one to get with eyeshadows. Um, because occasionally, like you either get you can get ones that are you know there's just not enough pigment there, and so it just looks washed out and weird and not bright and all that kind of stuff. But then you can also get ones that maybe don't blend very well and sort of stick and get awkward and stuff. So I'm really, really curious, considering that pretty much all of the other shades I've tried from Mello have been like reasonably like natural kind of colors, the browns and the pinks and the reds and um, the, their olive greens are beautiful. Both, I've used that Bake Shadow and I've also used the one from the quad and they are both absolutely freaking gorgeous. I love olive green on my skin tone. Um, yeah, I'm kind of curious. There we go. Brows aren't quite done yet though. So that's the Mellow Brow Definer in Auburn. Auburn. Um, this one has all the labeling is completely rubbed off because it's a bit older. But this is from Elizabeth Mott. It's called Queen of the Fill. It is a tinted brow gel, again, in the shade Auburn. So it's quite a bit warmer and all that kind of stuff. But this is, it comes on a little spoolie. And this is kind of like mascara for your eyebrows. It just defines those individual hairs again and makes them in, like they stand out individually from the background color of the pencil. And it also holds them in place as well. And kind of just sets everything. So I do quite like using both products. And I do have, um, Mello has a tinted brow gel and I don't have it yet, but it's on its way. It was purchased for me from Throne, but it's been out of stock on the Mellow website for ages um, in the shade that I needed. And so I found it elsewhere. <laughs> um, so I'll be have, I'll have that in my hands soon. So they go, and that's, that's my brows. It's pretty simple and straightforward, but it really just like compared to how I looked like I didn't have any before, it makes a massive, massive difference. Um, what else do I want to get in your eye? Eyebrow mascara. Yeah, it's literally eyebrow mascara. It's super cool. You can get it clear as well. I've got a couple of them that are completely clear and all they do is just hold your brow hairs in place. They don't feel like some of the older ones I had felt sort of weird and crunchy and like I had something stuck to my face. Um, but this one that I've used and a bunch of the newer ones, I'm like more recently. Okay. Um, more recently, the ones that I've been using are, are super good. It's not like hairspray for your eyebrows. It's more just like a gentle mascara. So it just holds them where you want them without, yeah, it's, it's quite funky. And yeah, I just, I really like how it adds that definition of the hairs. I do prefer colored ones to the clear ones, but that's okay. You know, each to their own personal preference. Um, now I have to grab some eyeshadow brushes because I didn't grab eyeshadow brushes because I wasn't sure which products we're going to use. And depending on the different products, I would have picked different brushes. So I will, uh, be back in a second stream later today. Um, yes, this is what this is up here. See this with the timer? Hey, yes. Um, brilliant. One second, please. Oof. Yes, 
Okay. So I've grabbed a double-ended brush and a, a non-double-ended brush. So this one is fluffy. It's like, like same shape all the way around and fluffy. So that's good for putting stuff in the crease because you can buff it out. This one there is teeny little baby one and it's kind of, it's, it's short and stubby and it's wide. So I pop, use that to pop stuff on my outer corner because I can place it quite precisely. And then because it's narrow like that, I can also get that like just under here to do that bit there. And then this baby is kind of like that one, except a little bit longer. So it means I can put down more shadow. Um, and I'll use that for in the, the middle bit here for putting that cinnamon shade down. Um, oof, after a makeover, now you've had a color change. What about doing those eyes? <laughs> maybe get, maybe get chess some falsies. I knew all of you wanted a long time, it's been out of stock. Should be like, ooh, I probably not a fake cheap version. Oh, fingers crossed, Jeebs, fingers crossed. Nothing worse, eh? Nothing worse. Let's pop some of this stuff. Oh, wait. Okay, well, aside at least. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna pop the crease shade down first. So um, depending on what colors you're using or depending on what colors I'm using when I'm putting something together, sometimes I'll put down the stuff on my lids first and then do like the around stuff. Other times I'll do the around stuff first. Like it really just depends on the kind of design I'm looking for and the shape I'm trying to create and also the actual colors. So if I, for example, um, if I was doing something that was all very similar shades, like if it was all like pinky reds, I could do like the dark bit first and then the bright bit and then add the halo effect around it because it'll pick up some of that red and pink uh, and draw it out to make it fade really beautifully. But if I did that with, because I've got that gonna have that pop of blue on the outside, if I put the blue down first and then put the orange in my crease, chances are it's going to pick up that blue and just muddy it and put it everywhere and drag it all the way through all of the orange. So I don't want to do that. I do want to have a blend, but I want it to be in a very specific space, not everywhere. So I'm going to do my crease first. So I'm going to grab that shade brick. Just pick up a little bit on my brush. I'm going to place it down a bit first and then I'm going to start blending it out. Some people would use one brush to place it and then another fluffier brush to blend it. I don't have those kind of brushes because I don't have that kind of money. Um, but this, this works just fine if you're doing like any kind of basic, I mean, the more intricate a look you're doing, the more brushes you're gonna have to use, obviously. Um, but I'm I'm pretty okay with just doing it this way, personally. But to each their own. Um, so what I'm doing, I'm also, so I've gone around and I'm gonna pull that down under my eye as well. Not all the way in. That's something I've started doing. Usually I'd bring it all the way in to create like a whole circly thing around my eye, but I've uh, I've been stopping about two thirds of the way in lately. And I'm quite liking the effect it has on my eyes personally. Not gonna be for everyone, obviously. You gotta play around and see what you like on your face. Cause that's what important. It's about what you like because it's your face. But yeah, I'm just using like that tippity top bit to sort of carry that color where I want it. My looking makeup is not good. Sometimes it's what you want. Sometimes you want the colors to all kind of, especially like I said before, when you've got shades, like if I'd gone in with um, blush and Sinopia and birch, like these three colors are all very similar. So muddying them together a little bit can help the blend look more seamless and that's okay. That's, that's totally fine. But because I've got three quite distinct colors here, I want them to blend. I don't want a line where they, like I don't want a distinct, I'm not doing a cut crease, but you don't want them to just blend. Into, you just want the blend to be like here. <laughs> well, I, I want the blend to be just here. You might have different opinions. You might want to have that little bit of swirly blue through everything. And that's, you know, artistic choice, completely up to you. But for what I'm aiming for today, that's not gonna work for me. 
But yeah, it can it can work sometimes, but it's uh not not what I want today. I really like this shade. This is a nice orange. It's not like it's it is it's like a brown orange. Is brick has a good color, a good name for it. Uh, it's kind of that orange brick kind of, at least in Australia, the red brick kind of shade. Um, but it's blending really nicely as well. Like I'm I'm not having to work too hard at it to try to make it do what I want. It's just sort of I put it down and then I spread it out and I'm like, cool. I'm happy with you. Uh, I do quite like it on my skin tone as well. Some oranges can sort of be a little bit overpowering on me and make me look a little bit ill. I know I look weird. Don't get me wrong. I, I am I'm very aware and I'm not going to not look weird until the last moment because that's... Liner and lashes bring everything together. Uh, you will see what I mean in an hour or so. <laughs> Liner and lashes uh, bring everything together. So what I'm doing now, I'm just kind of looking at myself and kind of comparing eye to eye. They're never going to be the same. My eyes are not the same shape, for example. My eyes are two quite different shapes. Uh, one of them is more open than the other. One is more round than the other. So when I try to do the same shape on both, it doesn't work. So I've had to figure out shapes that look good and similar on, on both eyes. What I'm more looking for is that there aren't any like patchy bits that need more blending, uh, that the rough shape, um, sisters, not twins. They're not gonna be a complete mirror image of each other, but they're gonna look similar enough that you know they're related. Uh, <laughs> same thing with your brows. Sisters, but not, the sisters, not twins. I reckon I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna move on to the blue. Yes, I will do the blue first. Um, which of these is going to help a lot on stream readers? Oh, I'm sure it'll be fine, Chris. I'm sure it'll be just fine. Place what you want to place, where you want to place it, and we'll have some fun with it. Okay, so I'm going to go in with that blue moon shade, that bright, beautiful cobalt blue there. Wish me luck. <sighs> All right, so I'm just going to get a little bit. Can you see the blue on there? Cool. Oh, hello. Greetings. Bye. <laughs> All right, let's see. Okay, alrighty. So it's not super unbelievably pigmented, which in this case is a good thing. You don't, like pigmented is great. Having something that you just kind of go boop and you've got this solid block of color is, is great, is great, but when you've got a bright blue, I'm not pulling on my eyelid there. I have very, like I have a lot of extra skin on my eyelids. So sometimes just placing a finger there to keep everything still rather than moving it around just helps me get those little bits that aren't like, can you see how it's sort of just moving my skin around with the brush, even though I'm going super lightly? Yep. So um, when you've got a bright goddamn blue in with all of these oranges and pinky red shades and browns and stuff, you don't necessarily want it to be super hella pigmented because then you put one little spot on your eyes and bam, you can't take it back. Once it's on, it's on. You cannot do anything about it. But what I am seeing here is that I can build it up. I can put more on top and make it a more vibrant color. And that is fantastic. You want it buildable. If it's not pigmented, that's okay but buildable is key so that you can make an entire peacock eye if you really wanted to using this. Like, look at how gorgeous that shade is. I'm not sure if you can kind of see it properly, but it is a beautiful shade of blue. It's absolutely gorgeous. And it means I'm going to be able to blend it better as well because I can move it around. So if I switch over to here, and just kind of blend those edges. 
no more harsh line. And it's blended just there. Yeah, I really like that. Awesome. Yay. I'm really happy about that. And while you're doing that, I'm just gonna like buff that edge a little bit in the middle of my eye. So it's not so much of a line anymore. And what I've done there, because I remember I showed you that shape of the brush, I used one side to pick up the blue and put it down. And then I rotated around to the clean-ish side to kind of just blur that edge a bit so that when I put the orange on, it'll be easier to make it a seamless blend rather than having to get in there and kind of try to mix them on my eye. I'm really happy with that. Um... Did you see blue? I did. How do you feel about sea blue color? N neutral? I, sure. Awesome. Is it a mood? No joke. I, whoosh, I've never seen Naruto, sorry. Oof, what's the oof, Vera? What happened? What happened? Uh, Thor, Ducks, and Neke, congratulations to you on your bonus shit. Well done. <gasps> skin chest. You guys, this is skin chest. I want my Entombed Templar skin. I am a very excited. Join me on the battlefield. Unlock a new skin. What am I trying to get? I'm just leveling. Okay. In that case. That'll do it. Awesome. All right. Now what I'm also gonna do, instead of like, so before I was grabbing color like this, I'm gonna go straight down and grab the color just on the tippity tip, like the very top of the brush. And just get it under here. Just a little bit, just like a third of the way along. Just to kind of bring that together. Just that, that's it. Just add a little touch there. All right, cool, onto the other side. Again, not pulling on my- you can see that the skin is still moving quite easily. Um, I just have lots and lots of spare eye skin, which is not a fun time for applying makeup. That's oh, okay. It's not frustrating enough to go under the knife for, so I don't really care that much. I've just picked up a couple of techniques along the years that help me sort of work with it rather than struggle and fight against it. Okay, so I'm gonna blend out that edge. You can even see there, like when I do that, it just pulls all of that skin. <laughs> but that's okay. It is me! That is who I am! And that's totally okay. There we go, just sort of... Yeah, much better. Less of a harsh edge. And then pick up that little bit of blue. <gasps> Maybe I can do a blue liner. Like a, a blue eyeliner on my lower lash line. That'll be fun. I'm sure I've got some navy blue liners. I have entirely too much makeup as it is, so might as well use some of those beautiful colors. There we go. What do you think? I mean, it's not done yet, obviously, but like, <laughs> I really like that blue. I think I might buff that in just a touch more. But honestly, I am, I'm vibing this. Is that how to use that word correctly? I don't look, I don't even know. I'm pretty happy with that. So Pico and on Network, so streaming service is called Pico Plus. Huh. 
I've not heard of that, sorry. Fierce portal now, orange and blue. I didn't even realize, look at me go. That's good with your hair, Oh, thank you, thank you. All right, in with cinnamon. Cinnamon is my favorite spice, and so I'm hoping I'm gonna really like this shadow as well. So let's go on in there with the brush. Oh my God, look at that. Oh my lord. Can you see how shiny that is? Like, I'm not sure if the lights are catching it properly, but good lord, that is freaking gorgeous. And that's like next to no shadow as well. Like, that's not much of it at all. And, 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 it's not even wet. So, um, there's. Because shadow is a powder, sometimes it can be tricky to get it to like stick properly. And so a lot of people to make their particular shade more impactful, they will um, spray their eyeshadow brush. They'll pick up the eyeshadow and then they'll spray it with a, um, sorry, I've got, the, I've got some dry skin on the corner of my mouth again. And it's being a bit of a pain in the butt today, but that's all right. Um, they'll spray it with setting spray, which makes it wet, which means that it sticks better to the eyelid, which also, if it's metallic, will make it look like aluminium foil or aluminum foil, depending where you're from. Um, so they call it foiled, like it's a foiled look because it looks like it's wet. It looks like it's, you know, you've taken a piece of foil and stuck it on your face. Um, but the fact that this is this gorgeous without using setting spray is just, oh my goodness. Um, a little thing that I've learned over the years uh, is that if you kind of, if you pat on eyeshadow like this, like up and down motions, it won't do the whole shimmery shiny thing very well. Some will, some eyeshadows will, um, a lot won't. But if you kind of like, drag it but you don't have to drag it like that you can just do like little dragging motions and also to get down to that lash line going upside down with the brush and sort of just like rubbing it side to side gets it right up there into the like right next to those hairs but the little drag 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 kind of imitates putting it on with a finger which makes it look really really shiny that's worked quite well for me by the way, if you guys have any questions, feel free to fire them off and I will answer them when I can. Shiny America. Yeah, look, America ignores letters all the time. Um, I am loving that. The blue and the orange. Holy cow, that's gorgeous. I know I still look weird. I know. Remember what I said? Liner and lashes. Eyeshadow done. That's it. That's usually what I do with my eyeshadow for mount makeup. That's it. I, I grab my three colors. I figure out where I want to put them and I just pop them on like that. Super easy. Super simple, quite effective, especially if the colors work really well together. Uh, right, so back to the face makeup. Uh, first thing I usually go with is bronzer. And I'm gonna have to take this off for this because otherwise it's just gonna be a mess. Um, the bronzer I'm using at the moment, as you can tell by the massive amount of pan, uh, this is from Colourpop. Uh, I'm not affiliated, but Colourpop is really great for cheap, but good quality makeup. Some of their products are a little bit miss, like sometimes they bring out something funky and experimental and new and it's not great, and that's okay. Uh, but the vast majority of their stuff is really bloody good and oh my God, so affordable. Um, the reason this, this is the pan I was talking about, right? So like the, the metal thing that they put it into. Some of their products you can purchase as a pan only. And I have like a magnetic palette. So it's like this, it's a palette like this, but instead of having stuff in there already, it's just a, a blank sheet of like magnet. Um, and so you just kind of drop the pans in there and you can mix and match, mix and match your own palette. So that's where I've pulled this from is my magnetic palette. 
Um, but you can also buy them in like a plastic containery thing if you want to. It's like an extra dollar. So you can save money if you have a magnetic palette already or something that it will fit into, but you don't need to if you don't want to, or if you like having the, the plastic kind of containers that they come in, that's also okay. I get it. Uh, makes it a bit easier to uh, carry around and stuff for sure. But yeah, so this is the bronzer. This one is called Private Party. It's very slightly shimmery, but it's also quite pale. Um, a lot of bronzers tend to be fairly dark because they're trying to simulate it's bronzing it, it's it's a it bronze goddess the whole like uh, tan basically i'm not tanned um as you've probably noticed i am pale af and so bronzing was something i was terrified of for a very 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 long time um but then i tried it and it worked just fine so just pick up a you can kind of you can see that like you can see where the the pan goes because there's the hole in the powder on the brush. I think it's hilarious. Um, a lot of people talk about uh, bronzing in a three pattern. So you come up from the temple, like from, from the side of your forehead, you come down past your temple onto your like cheekbone, just under the cheekbone, and then you go back and then just under the jaw. So that's like a three, a three shape. And that's how you bronze. I found that was too much for me. I looked dirty. Maybe I was just terrible at blending or I put too much on. Highly likely for both of them. Um, but all I do is just here and then down here a little bit. And you only need the smallest little amount. And so that's what I kind of just shave off the uh, the, the edge of my, my jawbone there. Um, and that's all I put on as well. Like you can, you can barely see it, but then at the right angle, it kind of, yeah. So it just sort of takes, the idea is that placing shadows sends stuff away from you and placing light brings it closer to you right so by bronzing here the idea is because you're casting this area of your face in shadow it sends it backwards which makes your face look thinner is what they say um i'm I don't know if it does that for me. I'm, I'm sure it probably does in, in some small manner, but that's not why I use it. Um, I, I'm not exactly sure. I like the way it looks. I like the way that it looks, just having it sort of here-ish, and I'm not exactly sure why I like it. I think when I have my hair down, I usually have it covering just here, which is, and that's where I've put my bronzer and the hair sort of comes here. I feel like maybe sending that backwards and then having the hair on top of it maybe looks, because my hair is quite thin, maybe it, it, use, it makes an illusion of my hair being thicker or something because it sits away from my face and then there's darkness and then there's face. So maybe, it, I don't know. I honestly couldn't tell you. All I know is that I like the way it looks. Um, but yeah, so just a touch down there. That's it. Um, right. Contour. So contour, this is, from, oh, so yeah, that was come from Colourpop. I have my contour and my highlight. These are both from the same brand as you can probably tell by the packaging. And these are both from your style as well. These are actually in the same listing and it's blush. <laughs> I know the blush listing has a, like 50 different shades of blush, one highlighter and three contours or something. So these are both from the same listing. Um, it's, uh, it's called Single Blusher or something. Something, something, Single Blusher, I think it is. But it's from uh, the same, except switch the M and the E. So it's spelt the S-A-E-M. But it's, I believe it's pronounced the same, but I don't know because it's a Korean brand. So I'm not, I'm not too sure. Don't quote me on that. But those are the two there. And then I have a Mellow Blush uh, and this is in the shade Pinky Promise. So what I've always learned is that you do this like Neapolitan ice cream. There's a brown one back there. Good. Neapolitan ice cream. Um, English is weird. English is very weird. Now I'm curious if Pockets is women's pet peeve when it comes to clothing, what is their pet peeve when it comes to makeup? Uh, I don't know that there is one. Maybe shades, like the shade selection being crap and never being able to find a shade that matches your skin, maybe. 
Question. Do you know, can you imagine how your makeup will look before doing it? In the same way artists can see their art before doing them kind of thing. Um, not sometimes, sometimes, not really, not really. Um, I more look at, like, I know the shade that goes in my crease should probably be matte. The shade that goes on the outside should be darker than everything else. And the one that goes on the inside should be like a really shimmery, lighter pop of something. Um, so that kind of helps me figure out where to put stuff. And I'll often grab the shades, like on my, like grab them on my fingers and then kind of swipe them together to see how the colors look together. But um, just to make sure they're not gonna look like crap. <laughs> but not really like, I can't visualize it super duper well. The other thing is that the way that they look in the pan is not always the way that they look on your face. So it can be quite difficult to, even, even with the swatches, if you swatch something and then you go and put it on your face and then you compare, they'll quite often look very different. So it can make it very difficult to sort of visualize that. And I have, if I had two palettes maybe, and I knew how every single one of them looked on my face because I could remember them and all that kind of stuff, then maybe, but I have 500 plus pans. So this one, has 12 pans of eyeshadow. So this would count as 12, right? Because there are 12 little squares. Um, I have 500 plus individual pans of eyeshadow. Some of them are little ones like this. Some of them are bigger ones like this, but 500 plus. So trying to remember what they all look like on my face. <laughs> nah, not gonna happen. It ain't gonna happen. I'm German Italian, but little Russians are genetically pale, yes. Uh, as darkness, there is face. A pretty scary sentence without context. Yeah, you are right. You are correct. Hello, Josh. Welcome back, Chris. Yes, them. Thank you very much for dropping my mellow link. Ah, oh, it's so good. Anyway, so we're starting with the chocolate. This is contour. I personally like to use an angled brush for this. This one's quite a thin one, but it's quite dense. So it's, it's like lots of hairs, but it's a smaller, yep. Um, but yeah, so Neapolitan ice cream, uh, chocolate, strawberry, and vanilla. So we've got our chocolate here. This is our contour. Uh, I'm just going to pick up the smallest amount. Like you don't need much of this at all. And this goes <laughs> like under that cheekbone because the idea is you're creating shadow underneath the cheekbone to make it look like it's bigger, poking out more, brighter. You're making yourself again, look thin. Uh, so I just kind of underneath there, pop it on the skin and then sort of blend it out. And this is where the angle kind of comes in because I can blend it out here, but it's sort of a little bit up here, but more heavily down underneath. So that's where I would pop that just in that kind of hollow there. And then same on the other side, I mean, there's not just powder contours and stuff either. There are like cream contours and all this kind of stuff, but those things terrify me. So I prefer, plus I'm quite an oily person. Like my skin produces a fair amount of oil. I think I've put more on this side than I did on the other one. I did. Um, but yeah, my skin produces a fair amount of oil. So the more powder products that I'm using, is the more powder that's there to kind of absorb the oil as it's produced. Uh, but yeah, so there's your contour. Then strawberry. Blush. Blush goes right next to it. I like a lot of blush. So this one is a really, really lovely shade for my skin tone. It just kind of blends in so naturally. Like you can, you can see that it's there, but it's just, it's the right shade for my skin tone. So it just kind of looks like I'm flushed rather than I've painted my face pink. I was quite happy when I got this one and was like, ooh. So this one's kind of sitting directly on the cheekbone. So the, the chocolate was just under the cheekbone there. This is going directly onto the cheekbone. right next to the brown. Perfect. Uh, so that was from Mellow. Again, that's Pinky Promise, their powder blush. 
I'm an affiliate there. I'm oh, also an affiliate for your style. Ah, <gasps> chaos. Eight months. My goodness. Thank you so much for the resub. Thank you for the resub. The lighting store can be different. The lighting in your house when you buy carpet, it looks nice in the store, not always as good in your house. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Unless you want to light your house like a store, which I would not recommend because you'll have like potentially killer headaches all the time. <laughs> Uh, how you feel about sea blue? Oh, I said like ne neutral. It's not like, I don't dislike it, but I don't love it either. Like it's not my favorite. Yeah, I, I'm neutral. Uh, <laughs> Hello, girls. Doing well? Thank you. I hope you can say the same. Highlighter. So this one is again from the same, the same company. Yeah, yeah. So contour and highlight, same thing. Uh, and this one is GD01 or GD01. And this one, I'm gonna pop just, it's still on the cheekbone, but it's like just above that pink. And this one's from Yosan. Just look at, look at, ah, it's so pretty. So shiny. So shiny. So this is that hole again. Um, so the contour is designed to lower, to, to sink your cheek in, to make you look slightly thinner. And then the, I can't see the other side because the camera is, yeah, good. Um, the blush is to make you look healthy and because pink cheeks, blood flow, healthy, good. Uh, and then the highlight is to bring your cheekbone out. Again, that whole make you look thinner thing again. Uh, it's also just kind of fun to play with. You can get all sorts of really funky. I've got a, where is it? Yeah, give. Whoa. Oh my god, my abs. I hate myself. Okay, I did exercise today and it fucking hurt, so just bear with me. Where the hell is the pretty one? I mean, they're all pretty, but where is the particularly pretty one? Oh! Hello, where are you? No, that's not it. Where is it? Oh, it must be one of these ones. It is. Oh, okay. I'm fine. Um, this is a highlighter. Yes, that says glow like a mermaid. It it literally That's that's it's shiny and shimmery and it's a highlighter. And all those colours blend together to be like a golden champagne -y shimmery shade. It's it's beautiful. So like highlighter is fun. And if you want to use it, you should. Screw the whole being thin and looking thinner and blah blah and bugger all that. Just if you if it looks fun and you want to put it on your face, might as well. Uh, is Fear Mermaid? No. I suck at contouring. Me too. This is why I use like a super pale one and like a really light hand. And I only do it under here. That's it. None of this nose crap, none of the contouring your forehead or your chin or nah, none of it. I am terrible. <laughs> There are ways. There are ways. Hello, Ellie. I said, that's okay. I hope you have a fantastic evening. <gasps> and Chaos with the cheer. Thank you so much for the biddies. <laughs> totally fine, Chris. Not a worry. Not a worry. Okay, so, right. There was one more thing we had to do with the highlighter. I forgot. And this is something that I feel like dramatically changes how an eyeshadow look looks. Okay, so like watching, 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 right? I've got a little fluffy brush, and I'm gonna do this. Yeah, I think that's probably enough. So like, do you see, like, do, do you see what that did? I can see what it did. I'm not sure if the camera is going to show it very well. But like having that little pop of of shimmer or or pale in the corner there just kind of wakes up. It makes it look less shadow and and less kind of sunken. It's again that whole light bringing things forward. It just kind of makes it a lot. It, it's like adding salt to food. It makes it more alive. It brings brings everything just a touch to life. Um, see, I should have more. Yeah, right. It's really funky. Hey, so highly recommend popping just a little tiny bit of, of highlighter in the little inner corner bit there. 
perfection. Love it. I, every, all the time. I can, if I go outside and I catch a side of myself and I go, ah, oh, shit, I forgot to put the highlighter in my inner corner. Like, it's, it's that noticeable to me. That noticeable. Such a difference. Oh, um, yeah, I use a pale contour and only a little bit of it. And I only contour it like literally just here on, on both sides, obviously not just one side of my face, but I don't do like this forehead and nose contouring and chin and blah, 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 blah. No, nah, none of it. I, nope. Firstly, too much effort. Secondly, I'm crap. So no, I just do, that's enough for me. That's enough for me. Cool. So what have I got left? Ah, this is also from Mello. I can put my headset back on now because uh, this is Mello Mineral Eyeliner in the shade uh, Midnight Snack. Midnight Snack. It's black. It's black. Now, um, I do not advocate tugging at your eyes to put eyeliner and stuff like that on because uh, the whole idea is if you stretch your skin over time, it loses elasticity faster. So all that kind of, you know, the, the youthful appearance stuff, it just, it makes wrinkles and saggy skin happen faster. Um, however, as mentioned before, my eye skin, there's a lot of it and it can be quite loose. So applying something like eyeliner is a pain in the ass. <laughs> um, but I don't like pull at stuff, I try to be as gentle as I can while still actually getting the product to get to my skin properly. Because if I try to do this like this, I just don't get that sort of like everything. It just kind of my skin moves with it and I can't get it to. So what I do, I place my finger there. I don't move it. I just place it. And it gives it less space to move. It still moves. Just not as much. Just not as much. And then I do pull a little bit here, but like not much. And I also try to draw from the inside of my eye here. because there's less skin in the inner corner to pull from, it gets worse out here. So if I draw from the inside, it tugs less. And I also try to connect it down to here. just because I feel it makes it look a little more complete. Um, so that's, I don't do eyeliner flicks. I have, um, so my crease is quite deep as you can probably see. And I'm not sure if you'd be able to see, um, but at the outside here, my crease actually forks. So I've got a double crease, but only at the end. So trying to do winged liner and stuff, it always breaks. It's just, there's always that gap there and it's just really terrible to try to get it to look right. Uh, I've used stampy things. Stampy ones are the only way I can get it to look even marginally correct. Um, but then my eyes are different shapes. So if I can get this one to look like it's a continuous line, this one looks like that. Like it's just there because my eyes are different shapes and they're they're balanced slightly different. Like the the angle is like all the kind of stuff. They're different enough that it doesn't work. So I don't do wings ever, ever. I do wings with my lashes and I'll show you how I do that later when we get to lashes. But first I'm going to do this side. You guys got to start thinking about what color nails you want me to have. I know Sheebs wants me to do stamping, but we need colors as well.
okay, they're close enough. Um, you can probably see like the the underneath here, the the waterline, like the edge of the skin where there's like wetness from the eye and all that kind of stuff. That's still it's skin color still, and it it does visually make it a little bit strange because you've got this like liner eyeliner, but then there's like skin tone just like right there. Um, oh, what the hell? <laughs> Nah, the... It's not your internet connection. Check your fucking Steam, Jess. <laughs> We're looking now. Nah, still crap. Check your Steam. I've got drop frames up to 4%. It's, and that was not happening until you got home and not until you touched your PC. In fact, looks like last three minutes it's been happening. Give me a minute, guys. Um, give it a second. Oh, it's still climbing. Ugh. doing anything. Yeah, none of my stuff is doing anything wrong. My drop frames are still climbing though. to restart my stream and see if that helps. Otherwise, the next step is to unplug Jess from the internet and see if that helps. And then if it does, he's going to need to do some wiggly wobbly stuff. Um, I'm going to run that battle though, because yeah, that's the right thing to do. Uh, so I'll be back shortly. That hasn't worked. All right, I'm gonna leave that keeping on going for now. But um, I'm gonna have to probably restart again, but I'll, I'll be back shortly. <laughs>
Um, so I'm aware that it's not Twitch. Um, I, I know that it's our connection uh, because it happened as soon as soon as Jas's PC turned on, everything went to shit. As like the moment that it happened was when everything went to shit. So I know for a fact it's our connection. Jas's PC is now off and I'm still sitting at no bitrate. So that tells me that when his computer turned on, something changed in the network. Zam, Thor, and Death, congratulations to you on your bonus shit. Well done. Um, yeah, so I, I know that it's something to do with us. I'm going to start this battle anyway, because, I mean, it's fine. Uh, but what is a really good question? What it is is a really good question. Switch guys are even having issues. Uh, it shouldn't be Twitch. Have they... Twitch support tweets. Have a look at their feed. Usually they're pretty quick to acknowledge that there's an issue. I can read chat, Nos. You don't have to talk to me, talk about me like I'm not here. <laughs> I'm, I'm here and reading Twitch. It'll be lagging like hell. Ads are not handled by the server that we stream to as creators. They're two completely separate things. Completely separate things. Okay. Wonder. Read the captions. <laughs> Turn the captions on, have a read. All right, let's. I don't know what it could possibly be on my connection. Something went bang when Jas turned his computer on, but I don't know what. Let's try this again. Still super unstable. It's still super unstable. Thank you. 
I, I, I don't know what to do. Yeah, so it's still hella unstable, but instead of flicking between one and three thousand, it's flicking between four and six thousand. <laughs> so it's it's better, but it's still shit. It's flicking around a lot, and I'm sitting at nearly fifty percent drop frames, which means half of what I'm doing isn't coming through. Like, <laughs> I I don't I don't know what to do. Oh, da drop frames aren't on the dashboard floor. That's in OBS. Twitch doesn't know how many frames aren't getting to it because it's it's like sending a letter and saying, please tell me if you don't get this letter. They don't know if they didn't get it. Um, OBS is the one that gives you that stat. Yeah, and it's climbing real quick. <sighs> of course, it's a bloody redemption stream. I mean, better a redemption stream than a sponsored stream, but, um, <laughs> god damn. Learning things about Twitch, hey, Thor? Fun times, fun times. God, this sucks. I am, I'm so sorry, like, to all of you guys, this, this blows, and I know that this is not quality entertainment, um, and I, I sincerely apologize for that. If I knew what it was, I would fix it. Obviously. I'm not, I'm not sure what it is um there is a chance that in like a period of time it'll just all come good but i i what do i do about that like do i wait and see if it comes good do i push through and hope it comes good do i cancel the stream do it like what do i do here i i don't i don't know what I've been able to see is really enjoy I'm glad, Landa. I'm really, I'm really glad. Um, are you guys finding this interesting so far? Like, are you interested in the actual makeup doing and stuff? Or are you just kind of interested to see how it looks? Like, how I actually, what I do off camera is like, what, where does the interest for this kind of stuff come for you guys? Because I can talk, that's for sure. OBS or internet issue. It's not OBS. OBS itself cannot cause dropped frames. All it can do is report them. OBS settings will never cause dropped frames. It is an external factor that OBS is relying upon. Most likely an internet connection. Um, a lot of the time it seems like from the research I've done, because I've had this issue a few times, um, from the research I've done, it's um, either your connection has dropped quality substantially like you know maybe somebody's hit a pole not likely i have fiber everything's underground but uh you know something like that like somebody like a satellite has crashed or a power pole's been hit or something it's it's something to do you know your your connection's still there but it's trash um or the connection's overloaded uh you you might remember a little while ago the, the reason we straight away jumped to it's jazz's pc is because a while back when he started up his PC, he's got Steam to auto start with Windows. And it updated not only itself, but some of his bigger like 60, 70 gigabyte games started downloading updates. And it completely trashed, like it overloaded the, the bandwidth that we have. Cause you know, you only have enough space in the tube and he filled up a lot of the tube with Steam. And I my, my stuff couldn't get through the tube in the other direction. Uh, and so that's, but we've stopped that. He's turned off all his automatic updates now. Um, but it's, yeah, I don't know what's... I don't know. I've gone through my task manager. We've gone through his task manager. We can't find what it is. We can't figure it out. Um... It'll, it'll be something. There will be something hidden somewhere that's doing an update or and we just can't find it. We can't because it's doing a stealthy ninja update or something. It, I guarantee you that's what it is. Um, and knowing my luck, it'll be something I use for stream that's updating itself while I'm using it. Bastards. Uh, <laughs> um... Jas burned up all the intertubes? No, we don't blame Jas. We don't blame Jas, okay? Like, I have all my automatic updates and stuff turned off because I know 
that with my luck, something will kick off during a stream. But usually his updates, most, excuse me, most programs uh, have the tiniest fucking updates that you won't even feel it happening. You know, like it'll, it'll just, it'll be like a blip and the internet will kind of go, wait, oh no, okay, it's fine. Do you know what I mean? Like it'll be the teeniest, tiniest thing that you don't even notice, but occasionally, or occasionally there is something that is just a little chunkier. Um, and I'm going through and just shutting down so many programs right now. Um, hoping that something makes it change, but, um, there are some I can't shut down because I use them for stream. Uh, but yeah, it's a... Uh... Streaming is an interesting experience. There are, there are so many things that you just wouldn't even imagine would affect it, and yet it does. Who'd have thunk it? Who'd have thunk it? Uh, hello, Ness. Fantastic morning wishes to you too. This download shouldn't affect your upload, I think. It, you don't get two separate tubes. You have bandwidth. As far as I know, you have bandwidth. Uh, you can set up that bandwidth to prioritize one over another or something like that, but often it's not something you can do um, easily or yourself or stuff like that. It's usually like you just, you have different speeds, you have different capabilities of speed, but that doesn't, it's not capabilities of bandwidth. Um, as far as I know, what would be great is if I have my own internet connection, but I can't afford that. We can't afford twice the internet bill every fucking month. Uh, I'm wondering if my router can tell me anything. Oh shit, what's the password? Um, that one. Mm, I just say that to me all the time. Stealthy Ninja updates. Yeah, I've completely disabled. I had, right? So Windows is supposed to not do a, an update, not do a restart. An automatic restarts are meant to be shut off if the computer is in use, right? Yeah, right? In use. Yes or no question. Would you consider having, like, obviously having, like, a browser window open? and sitting there, even if something is uploading in that browser window, technically that's not a PC in use. What if, however, you had Vegas open, a video editing software, and it was rendering, actively rendering a video. It doesn't require any user input, but it is a nine to 12 hour process that the user is not involved in, but it is actively rendering a video. Would you consider that computer to be in use? Or not. Um, so automatic update from Windows considered that to not be in use. And so it automatically restarted my PC halfway through a fucking render while I was asleep. I render stuff overnight so that I'm not doing it during streams and things. And I ended up losing an entire night's of work, worth of work. And because it restarted, it also screwed up my YouTube upload as well. It's brilliant. It's great. I was I was furious. You guys might remember because I ranted about it in um in in Discord. Fucking I hate that. So I just I was very angry. So I may or may not have edited my registry to disable uh active hours. <laughs> Clear process using a file. Yeah. I mean even a browser upload isn't in use process. It I agree, however, I can see that. YouTube, YouTube, fucking Windows can't necessarily see that the that Chrome is at YouTube and uploading a file. Like it, it can't necessarily see that that's happening potentially. Um, but it absolutely goddamn can see that Vegas is chewing up all my CPU. <laughs> like that is for certain something it can bloody see. Um, did you just wake up my computer to update? Oh, good lord. I just, happy time zone, no, that's okay. Yeah, happy time zone. I, I, I'm i not sure if, you, is it still having issues? It is. Um, I have 60% drop frames now. Bang on 60, 60.0%. And I don't know what's causing it. And I'm not sure that I should continue creating content while this is happening, but I, I don't know what to do. This is a redemption stream. Maybe I should just keep going and hope for the best, but like, you're gonna miss half of what I'm doing. Is there really any point? Like, 
I, I don't know how to, I don't know how to do this. It went, the box went yellow for a bit and I thought it was getting better and then it went back to red and now I'm sad. Very interesting, happy to see you. Thank you, Landa. Yeah, I'm, I'm very frustrated because I want to create quality content. And when I can't, it's frustrating. Yeah, speed test, show connection, maybe. Speed test, you can't do a speed test while you're running a stream. Like, I'd have to shut the stream off and then like, it's just, it's, it's not worth it to get information that I already know that my internet is suffering. There's, there's no, there is, there's no point. There, there's literally no point to doing a speed test. A speed test is something you do like, and not just, not just that, but a speed test tests your speed to a very specific server in a very specific place, taking one specific path. It cannot test all of the hundreds of thousands of paths that I use to access the Twitch ingest servers. So my speed test might be pristine, but it clearly isn't specifically to access the Twitch servers at the very least. Yeah, speed tests have very, 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 very limited applications. Very limited. There's an option in Windows and community to shut down. There's no BIOS option. It doesn't work. Huh? Can't go stream. Uh, not really. <laughs> it doesn't really. I'm thinking, I'm wondering, I'm wondering if there's, ooh, yeah. Guys, I found something. <laughs> um, oh no, it's not gonna fix it. I'm just... I wonder... Okay, so I've found... I found a spot where I might be able to give myself priority on the network, but I don't think that's gonna help because Jas's PC is off and this is still... Okay, so my router allows me to give a specific device priority access to the internet, right? So it's, it specifically says, uh, whenever such an application uses the full capacity of the internet connection, the data of other applications will be transferred with lower priority. Um, oh, it actually has network application as well. Okay, so it's not just... Oh no, that doesn't help. Because it has enter the network application and none of them are OBS. 
So that's not going to help. Is there a way for me to set that OBS gets priority over everything else? Not in terms of CPU usage, but in terms of network usage. Uh, I just wasn't sure what you were talking about, Lion. Sorry. It's not really letting my computer starts when he presses the mouse button. I mean, why are you pressing the mouse button if you don't want the computer to be on? <laughs> oh, dear. Is there something maybe in the... I don't want to completely screw Jas out of being able to use the internet. This is not my priority. But, um, network. No, that's not what I want. That's resource values. Maybe details? Where's obs? <sighs> There's obs. There's a lot of obs in there. Set priority. It's above normal, but that's not... That's for CPU usage, not for network usage. Is there a... Oh, let me just pull usage to keep that port priority. Um, so the list in, in my uh, router, um, enter the network application. All, internet telephony, surfing, HTTP server, FTP server, eMule, BitTorrent, kek, MS remote desktop, SSH, Telnet, everything except surfing and mail. I do not even know where to begin with that. I am semi-okay with computers. I'm not that good with computers. Um, but if any of you guys can help, like for sure, give me the infos. And now I'm in task manager and I know I've got my process set to above normal, but that isn't, I don't know that that's how it works for network usage. I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can set a particular program to have better. Do you know what I mean? If that's a priority, if that if that's a possibility, I'd love to know that as well. Ah, oh, hey, mom. Welcome to the crappy stream. You never wear dangly rings? Oh, I absolutely do. I just don't usually with the headphones because it kind of... But yeah, they're pretty, aren't they? I, these are handmade as well. I got them from a, from a market. They're funky. I love touching them. They feel really nice. I was hoping for No, I know, right? It's like... You just... I know I just got a text from you. I wasn't sure what it was. And I knew you knew I was streaming. So I just sort of... Ah, yeah. <laughs> um, all right. If any of you know how I can give OBS higher network priority, let me know. I'm sitting at 60.7 dropped frames currently, which is 60.7% dropped frames. So you are seeing half of what I'm sending. Um, and I'm going to take a very brief break to go to the bathroom and hoping that OBS sorts its shit by the time I get back, which is unlikely, but possible. BRB! Run away, little girl! Run away! I'm back. Anyone have any solutions? Managed to do a Google Win 10 on the desktop. Yes, I'm Windows 10 home. Um, my makeup is half done because I started having issues with stream. Um, programs for that. I see. Yeah, downloading a new program would. <laughs> 
make it break even further. Option Windows 10, you can limit data usage globally yet, not per application. Well, that's the thing. I don't necessarily want to limit data usage. I want to prioritize data usage for one. Uh, but I'm on Win 10, yeah. Uh, my computer is actually not capable of Windows 11. My processor isn't, it doesn't have the security that Windows 11 requires. Fun facts with Theo. Um, but yeah, laptop is Windows 11, home. Stream is it working again? No, no, it hasn't been working the whole time. Awesome. Uh, location uses so much data. Yeah, but that again, that's not really gonna help me. Is it like? Yeah, that doesn't help because it tells me that OBS has used 282.29 gig and that Chrome has used 3,159.16 gig. That's completely unhelpful. That's like lifetime over the entire time I've ever been connected to my internet. Like, no, nah, that's not helpful at all. <laughs> um, so I, I can implement a data limit. I can say enter limit. Uh, and then I can have a monthly one-time or unlimited data limit set, but that's not, and it, all it does is warn you when you're getting close. It doesn't actually cap your data or anything. Um, yeah, that's, that's a useless feature. <laughs> uh, I know Chrome is used a lot. Chrome is where I use Netflix. <laughs> um, OBS advanced settings already has it at high priority. Of course. <laughs> yes, of course. Um, come now, I'm not an idiot. Try to make a sacrifice to the internet gods? No, like a certain person live with you? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But yeah, no, I've got, I, I've, I've, I've even, like when I launch OBS, it even uses a, an adjusted launch. Like it, I don't just click the, the pro, I don't just launch the program. I've got like an edited program launchy thing that automatically sets it as a higher priority. Um, so yeah, plus in the settings. So it's, yep. Yeah. Definitely not that. I'm already doing the task manager thing as I, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing regedit. It's not during a goddamn stream. Um, God damn it. This is really, really upsetting and annoying. And I imagine it's even more annoying for you guys because it's like, where is your Friday night entertainment? Um, is there a way to find out what port OBS is using? Because if my router can, my router can do prioritized applications. If it's a, if it's like one, if it's one, like an HTTP server, then I, and I can figure that out. Um, maybe that will... Oh no, okay, I don't have to set a specific thing, I just have to choose a thing. What? Sweet. <laughs> oh lord. Select from the list of network applications, the application you would like to prioritize within this category, but I don't know which one it would come under. I don't think it's internet telephony because it's not VoIP. It's not surfing. I have no idea what an e-mule is. It's definitely not BitTorrent. It's not remote desktop. I don't know what HTTP server or FTP server means. I don't know what SH, SSH means and what the fuck is Telnet. Like, I... <laughs> Um, right. No, that's, that's what I said before, Thor, about the fact that I don't launch it via the EXE. It's an edited EXE to automatically set it to a higher priority whenever it launches. That's already done. That it's, it's already done. Um, let's start a in a command prompt might show you. 
Oh, hang on. Run as admin. That was me. Both of those were me. Uh, net stat. Is that what you're saying? Net stat. Go. Whoa! <laughs> uh, right. So. There's some. I don't know how to read any of these. Oh, net hyphen A. Okay. Let's. Escape. Stop. Close. Close. So B tells you the city will freak connection. Okay. Secure connection. No telnet. Let's you talk for Okay, so it's definitely not telnet. So balance from it on Free software, yeah. Yeah, I cannot afford to. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. I cannot cannot afford. Um, this is a bit of a boring. It was, look, it was a big list and very quickly, okay. So what is the hyphen, what is the difference between hyphen A and hyphen B? What, what will actually help me in this situation? Just the process name. Oh, okay. Well, I know what the process is called, so that should be okay. Yeah, the hyphen A changed nothing. I don't think. That looks exactly like it did before. Yeah, okay. Let's try a... Uh, let's try the B and see if it looks any different. It'll help if I spelled the executable correctly, wouldn't it? Oh, fuck, okay. <laughs> One moment, please. This will be an annoying noise. That was me. <sighs> OBS is the first one listed. Um, okay, now how do I interpret this information? What, what does this give me? No, I, I, yeah, I, <laughs> um, and it's taking forever to, cause it's checking, like I've got so many programs I'm running anyway. So, um, what does this actually give me? How does this help me? Content is boring. I disagree, but that's personal. So, so I have my, like, data listed, but I don't, like, what does this do? How does this help me? Um, let's close that. It went yellow again. It was almost green, and then it dove back to red. God damn it. All right, let's start this battle while I wait for a response. Um... Okay, so tell me the ports on which the computer is listening. Ethernet statistics, IP routing table. But none of this is helping me with the router settings. So all that turned into links. Uh, Darkman. So it's all come up as asterisks. 
um, maybe put like spaces instead of dots because yeah, it, it's we've got link protection enabled, and so Twitch has turned those into links and has protected us by not showing us to them and showing them to us. Um, this way supports the VIP address the application is using. Right, okay, so that's not going to help me with this anyway because when I select HTTP server, it literally has no other drop down I can choose from. So I can't prioritize by port anyway. Uh, Dano, Silver, Thor, Landard, Ducks, congratulations to all of you on your bonus ship. Well done. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Duck. I'm like, that is very... Because I thought, like, maybe you'd put them in there to be, like, blank, blank. But then I'm like, no, that's that's something information is there. <laughs> a QoS rule. Port number one needed. Okay, how do I set a QoS rule then? Because now I've got that info. Um, there's a whole bunch of like uh, OBS browser page, blah, 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 which is all the bit different bits in OBS. Totally fine. But I have the one, the very first connection is OBS64.exe because I use 64-bit version. So um, okay, perfect. Awesome. Thank you for that, Darkman. That's really useful. Um, so I can see it's got local address and foreign address, and I can see both of those. I'm not going to say what they are because I don't know if that can be used against me, so I'm not going to say it. But I've got them there. Um, how do I do the next step? <laughs> Very sorry. I, I genuinely don't know anything about networks. I, I just don't. I know to turn it off and on again. I know to turn it off, wait for 10 seconds, and then turn it back on again uh, if you're having problems, but that's not going to help me right now. Good move. Thank you. Look, some things are just not designed to be read over the internet. I can tell you the bloody executable name because it'll run anyone who runs OBS 64 bit will have the same thing. But yeah, um, there was a bit of fluff on the microphone. I'm so sorry if that like deafened you all. <sighs> For God's sake, OBS, pull your shit together. I have a grumpy fear. I just want to do my makeup and hair and nails. Actually, while I figure this stuff out, what color nail polish do you want me to do? Because one thing that's really good at taking up a whole lot of time is waiting for polish to dry. Oh, no, anyways, I know, right, Zan, we need to bonk it with Jas's sword. And I'm, I'm so sorry, Jas, that you're stuck playing solitaire at the moment. Um, I reckon... I reckon maybe just turn your computer on anyway, because it can't get much worse than this. Green, we can do green. I know you like green, dude. You wanna mix it up? I have a fair bit of nail polish. Blue to go with eyes. I do have one that looks green or blue, depending on way, the way you look at it. I'm not sure how the camera will like it though. Red to match the hair. Oh my goodness, so many different options. So many options. I got two votes for blue. Swatches, I know, right? So I've got like, these are glitters. And, and my stamping polish is up. The ones that are like half black and half white, that's to show, for example, how something looks over white nail polish versus over black nail polish. Right, so that's, I know the camera's not focusing because it's, maybe, no. Nah. But yeah, so it shows you how, like, yeah, that's why I've got that like that. Then I've got, like, nudes and and some some pale pinks. So they're like your, your oh, and a couple of, like, grey kind of shades and stuff as well, because they go well in the in the whole, like, spectrum. And then we have, oh, some of these have gone a bit funky. Um, pinks through to reds and oranges and yellow. Uh, and then the darker ones in the middle here, some of them... Oh, okay. Some of them have gone kind of funky, but I think, yeah, they're just sort of, 
You know how chocolate blooms? It's almost like the nail polish is blooming. It's super strange. And it's, or it's, the two that do it are of the same brand and the same range from that same brand. So I feel like something's just going a little bit funky with those ones. Um, but then yeah, so there's like your darker maroons and stuff like that in the in the middle there. And then we've got everything from like pale blues and, and stuff through to darker blues and greens, and then like your deep darks, and then yeah, and then all the way through. So yeah, I've got a few. <laughs> uh are they mats? No, but so I think I've got one nail polish, one singular nail polish that dries matte, but I have a matte top coat that can go over anything to make it matte. Just a few, just, just a couple, don't know, just a couple. But yeah, so have a think about that. While you do that, I'm gonna keep going with the makeup and just kind of hope for the best, honestly. Um, I'm gonna keep an eye on that and just, if it gets real bad, then I'll have a fiddle with it. But um, I don't really wanna, yeah. So what have I done? What I was up to the eyeliner. So yeah, the, the flesh colored band right underneath my lashes there, I'm gonna pop some eyeliner on that too. Just cause it helps sort of fill in the color and this is still the same eyeliner this is the mellow cosmetics midnight snack mineral eyeliner and on the other side Because this piece of skin under here is wet from like your eye juices, it takes a little bit of extra work. Um, some eyeliners just will not stick to it. Like depending on how wet your eyes are, mine are quite wet. Um, so depending on how wet your eyes are, some eyeliners just will not stick to this little area. Some will, but they'll need a bit of extra work. I'm also just kind of going along and sort of where I can really see that skin tone, just trying to color it in a little. Cause it's the, it's the skin between the eyelashes now that's that you can see, but because I'm so pale, it really jumps out at you um, between the, the lines of black. But I find that doing that little line of black underneath the lashes there makes the lashes look fuller, makes them look like they go all the way to your eye rather than kind of sitting up above them a bit. It's, it's weird, it's, a, it's an illusion, but it, it works. It works. Because I, just, I know, Lion, they're gorgeous, aren't they? And all, every single one of them is a bottle in my drawer. Like, oh my God, periods are getting better. You shouldn't have said that because the block's gone red again. <laughs> Good old tight lining. Yes. Yeah. Waterline and tight line. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to grab a blue liner to do my lower one because I feel like it's just going to pop in a beautiful way. Oh. Oh. I think I've done that a little too hard. Um, okay. I think that one's going to be the right kind of blue. I do have a couple of other dark blues, but I just, I, oh, crap. I think that one's gonna be the right one to use in this situation. Awesome, so this is Savvy by DB. This is a one that's available in Priceline, dirt cheap. And uh, the shade is called Illuminating Indigo. See how this goes. Yeah, this one's not gonna stick very well. I think I might need to give it a sharpen. Yeah, I think the top of it's drying out a bit. Give me a sec. Sharpen off. 
Jesus. What the hell happened there? Let's see. It, I don't know what's going. It's sharpened really strangely. Um, I think this one might be nearly dead, unfortunately. It's a really beautiful color, but it's just not. Ah, uh, there we go. Hang on. Now, I'm not yanking down on this. I'm just trying to like make it kick out a bit by pressing on the skin near it. So I can get the liner on there better because my eyes are so bloody watery. Eyeliner really doesn't like sticking. So I kind of have to give it a bit of work to make it go on. But it gets there. It's not bad. Not bad. Alrighty. Um. What have I got next? Oh, mascara. This one is from Mizon. Collagen Curling Fix Mascara. This one is available from Yes Style. Um, I don't. You, I I'll curl my lashes if I'm not wearing falsies. But I'm. Wearing false use today, so I won't bother. I'll just wiggle it a little just to kind of get all the hairs settled into the spoolie. Just to make sure they all get like proper coverage. God, it's weird doing this with headset on. And don't forget your lower lashes, they make a huge difference. Just sort of wiggle it a bit and then just draw it lightly down. Because it's hard not to get the mascara on your skin. Sun well. <gasps> Den! Thank you so much for the resub! 12 months! Oh my god! How is that for a milestone? Enjoy your new sub badge! There we go. Just sort of wiggle it a bit. How's that for a difference? Can you see it? It can be a bit tricky because I'm wearing falsies. I've done my liner quite thick, my eyeliner on top of my lid. Um, and I do that intentionally to kind of make it easier to hide the band of the uh, of the false lashes. Um, if I'm not wearing falsies, I'll usually only put a little bit of liner just on the outside corner just to kind of elongate the eye in that direction. I won't put it all the way in, but because I'm doing the falsies, I do it a bit different. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Den. I appreciate the kind words. Definitely different. Awesome. So you can see. Brilliant. You can never quite tell with the camera, honestly. Sometimes it's like you can definitely see everything and then others it's like, what? That exists? No, I don't believe you. Alright. Okay. Falsies. I like to use Duo as an eyelash glue brand. 
And these were purchased from Amazon via Throne. So I'll take a little rubbery bit off there. Um, they're tweezers, but they've got that curved bit on the end, which helps you kind of get that same sort of shape when you're putting it on your eye. Uh, it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. These ones are called, I think they're Wanderlust from Exo Beauty. Not affiliated. There's still a little bit of eyelash glue from last time. That one's fine. Just getting rid of that. So let me grab this. Uh oh. So that's how you hold it with the thing. And you can kind of see, let me hover it over somewhere where there's like, actually down here. There we go, perfect. You can see that on this end, it's a whole lot longer. And then this end is kind of shorter and tuftier. The shorter bit, like the little tufty bit goes on the inner corner. So this particular one would go on this eye. Um, so the longer bits at the end kick out. And that's that hole when I was saying the, um, I don't do winged liner. I do wings with my lashes. This is how. So little tiny itty bitty brush. Just put a bit, a little bit, don't need tons, all the way across the entire band. And we let it dry a bit. You let it go tacky. So um, if you pop it on now, the glue is still wet. It's just going to separate. It's not going to actually hold. Um, the stuff with this glue, it's kind of, as you can see, it's like white, but it goes clear as it dries. So you can kind of see just next to my cheek here, just that bit there, how it's kind of like a, almost like a blue white kind of color because it's, it's starting to dry and it's also done really thin. So eventually you won't see any like pale parts to it. It'll be mostly dark. They'll still be, because you're never going to get it perfectly applied. It's never going to be a perfectly thin, even coating. Um, so there are going to still be a little bit here and there that are still a bit pale, but most of it will be dark. And when you get to the part where most of it will be dark. Oh, hello. That's a nice color. See, you finally got your shit together. If you click your settings on Twitch, and you go to playback, like there's an advanced settings thing and check your video stats. See how long the delay is. If the delay is anything longer or the buffer size is any larger than eight seconds, refresh. How's that for a difference? And you see how I get that shape on the outside and I didn't have to draw wings on. You can get lashes that are quite a bit heavier, like thicker, darker, more lashes towards the outside edge and they'll create more of that flick. But uh, I'm pretty happy with this. So I'm just kind of gently pressing them against my skin to sort of reaffirm that adhesion. But yeah, that's what lashes do. It takes something that looks a little bit funky and just sort of pulls it all together. Okay, we've still got a little bit of instability with the with the bitrate, but it seems to be a lot better than it was. I don't know what changed, but something's, something's come unstuck. All right, other lash, enough of, of comparing my eyes. It is quite a dramatic difference though, right? Quite a dramatic difference. If you have troubles with eyelashes, uh, so did I. Like false eyelashes are an absolute pain in the ass to apply. They are a biatch. 
Um, maybe it would have been your upstream. Yeah, potentially. Potentially. It, it seems odd that it would be my upstream going at the exact same time as Jas turning on his PC. Um, and you know what they say, the simplest answers are usually the correct ones. It was probably just our connection. But I mean, hey, I'm not going to question it. Because when we do, stuff goes bang. <laughs> Always the bloody way. But yeah, if you're having trouble with eyelashes, um, the way that I learned to put them on uh, is that I started with demi lashes. Uh, so demi lashes, instead of being a full length strip like this, they're about half the length. Um, and the idea is you just put them on the outside corner. And they're designed in a way that it's quite a dramatic kick so that it blends in. So you have your natural lashes and then it blends in and then gets longer at, at, towards the outside edge. And because my eyes, uh, because I am a small human, uh, therefore my head is smaller and my eyes are therefore also smaller because everything's in proportion. Um, Demi lashes covered about two thirds of my eyelid. <laughs> but they were a whole lot easier to place because you couldn't really place them. You could place them too far out, but then they'd just be hanging off the edge of your eye, but you couldn't really put them too far in because you're aiming for the outside corner. Um, and it made it a lot easier because with, with placement, like it, they're so long that if you put them too far in, they poke you. If you put them too far out, they poke you or they come off and it's just, it's a whole mess. Um, so I practiced with Demi lashes and I never actually purchased Demi lashes because Demi lashes will go for say like you know 12 bucks for a set maybe but full lashes go for 12 bucks a set too so I'd get a set of full lashes and instead of trimming the end to bring them down to my size I'd just chop them straight in half and I tried to go for lashes that were not too dramatic because having no lashes and then dramatic is just not great. So I went for ones that were more natural looking. And I also went for ones that instead, like these ones are quite short in the, like they're short and then they get bigger and they're long at the end. I'd go for ones that started short and got big and then ended short as well. Cause there are some lashes, some people prefer to have more fullness in the middle of their eye. It doesn't look right on my face, but on some people's it really does. So I'd go for those ones, cut them straight down the middle. And then if I got a piece that was short and then long, I'd put it on this side. And if I got a piece that was long and then short, I'd put it on this side. And that way, like I doubled my usage of my lashes and I got used to placing a shorter strip. And once I was pretty confident with that, I, I started lengthening them. I started getting like, I, I in, instead of cutting them in half, I'd just trim them down and uh and start doing that every time i got a new pace a new lash i'd make them just a touch longer until i was working with a full strip and that really helped me learn how to get the positioning right uh because positioning is the big problem with me and getting them to actually stick as well demi lashes are much easier to get to stick down um and it just sort of helped me learn and getting a good eyelash glue don't use the cheap shitty stuff that comes in the packs like if you can Try to get lashes that don't come with glue and then go and get yourself a good glue. This one's, like I said before, duo. Um, this one is their latex free glue. Um, not because I have an allergy to latex. Some people do, so this is a good option. Um, but because I liked the applicator better. The latex containing one came as a squeezy tube. I hate squeezy tubes. I can never get the right amount of glue out of a squeeze. It just doesn't work. Whereas this with a brush, I can control it myself. Um, so if you look for a, a tube, an eyelash glue tube that has a brush rather than a squeezy, um, yeah, I can vouch for Duo. I can also, the Duo latex free one specifically, I can also vouch for the KISS brand, K-I-S-S, -S, uh, KISS brand eyelash glue that I got from Priceline. It was dirt cheap. I bought it as an emergency because I realized I forgot to bring my eyelash glue with me. Um, and it, yeah it just worked. It kept my lashes on my face during the entirety of packs. Like crack of dawn, 8 a.m. doing my makeup, right the way through to like 11, 30, 12 o'clock, collapsing into the Airbnb with takeaway at Indian food on a Saturday night. Like <laughs> it, and the eyelashes never came loose. Whole last day, 
they did not come off. So can vouch for that. I'm going to test Duo out to the same extent uh, this year, but we'll see how we go. You can rude. You can rude. You can leave. Goodbye. If you're going to ask a question, just fucking ask it. Like, legit. Don't be rude to my viewers. And don't get someone to tell me to respond. Get fucked. No. Go away. Um. Uh, Debbie's good. If you aren't sure about lash trimming, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, super, super important. Like, and then even then, getting a full lash and just cutting it straight in half. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> so much easier. Like, put the ends together to make a loop, put your scissors in, and snip. Like, so good. So good. Gosh, you recovered your audio on my end only still had a sync until I refresh. Yeah, I did. I did recommend refreshing, um, but I'm not sure how many people heard. But that's okay. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Missing the drama. Oh, I did tell you, Jess, that you could probably just start your PC up again. Because it was still running like crap even with your PC off, so... Can also vouch for duo and bulk lashes from eBay. Amazing. I mean, I'm really, really cautious about, so my eyes are super stupid sensitive, like super stupid sensitive. My eyes water at the drop of a hat. I've got certain eyeshadow brushes that I can't use on my outer corner because they make my eyes leak. I've got certain eyeshadows that I can put on my, like on my, on my lid but I can't put them on the outer corner because it'll irritate my eyes and make them, it's just ridiculous. And when it leaks, obviously the water and the, the makeup and everything just goes to hell. Um, so I'm really, really cautious about bands, like the actual lash band on eyelashes because I'm like so, so silly sensitive to them. Um, but there are a lot of really good brands out there. You just, it, it is unfortunately a matter of experimentation and that does mean you have to buy them and put them on your face and see if they work, see if they, see if they go. But, um, yeah, it's good fun. You want to pop one for the drama? If I ever do falsies, I stick to demis because heavy lids. Totally fair. Totally fair. I have, yeah, over literally years, I have graduated slowly to, to full strips, but good Lord, I could never do individuals. <laughs> No way. And I mean, I'm sure they're like, they're amazing and you can get such customized. Like, fuck that. Too much effort, man. Too much effort. I see my little state. Totally fair. Totally fair. Uh, as long as I'm not sensitive, spend the whole six bucks. He's stuck. And if they suck, use them for random experiments. Yep. I've got quite a few lashes, like quite a few sets of lashes, uh, just from random bits and bobs, um, over the years. Uh, I've probably, if I used up a set a month, like if I use one set for the month and then toss them and then another set for a month and then toss them, um, I've probably got more than a year's worth. Um, so I don't need any anytime soon, which is great. But uh, yeah, look, um, Model Rock is probably where I'll be going when I do need to replace them though, because they do bulk clash um, and they bring them down to, I mean, it's not six bucks for, for a whole lot, but they come down to like $1.50, $2 per set of lashes. And I'll take that. I'll take that. Um, right. Maybe just like, that's okay. I mean, hey, you'll never have to buy them again. See, no problem in that. Uh, lipstick. Lipstick. Uh, is my last, second to last step of what I would usually do. So, does anyone have any suggestions for what color lipstick might go with this look? I just put them No, of course, of course. No lashes or anything to blend into, lol, and extremely dry eyes. Anything will irritate them to the point it hurt. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. So sorry to hear that, duck. Green. God, dude. I'm not listening to EU for any kind of color suggestions anymore, hey? It's just like, what even? Oop, knocked the mirror. Hmm. Tokyo. Well, so I still haven't gotten a chance to use it. I think it could. This is suggesting green, yeah. Periwinkle. Hmm. I do have. 
I'm not sure if you'd call it peri. Well, maybe you would. I do have a pale blue lipstick. Tokyo is a really deep, dark, almost black purple. Um, where is she with the eyeshadow? I was kind of, I was thinking maybe in like a, a, a brown orange or like an orange toned red. Okay, it's clashy matchy. You should do my colors using some colored liner because I always use gray. <laughs> oh, dupe. Yes, it is. So, like. Um, is that a bit cool? So I have the new other P you have and isn't open yet. Oh, I don't know what any of the neon primary colors are. I just I'm asking a lot. Interesting tour. That's super interesting. Welcome on in, by the way. That's super like it's like it's so difficult for to understand color blindness when you're not colorblind. Like you just you can't really grasp it, you know? It's sort of fascinating, hey. Why does that one come out farther than that one? Confused. Okay, um... Alright, so that would be... Sorry. The color normies. is, can you just say she was in perfect, smooth and jitter-free on my PC mobile? Okay, good. That's good to hear. Um, it's been pretty okay. It's been, it's been behaving itself, which is good. It went kabang earlier, but that's, look. It is what it is. All right. So I have this color. And then I have your periwinkle. <laughs> I will absolutely do this again when the camera is big, but just show you. And then this is Tokyo. This is Tokyo. Um, but it it looks kind of brown in the tube. But if you have a look at the color on the wand, which you're not going to be able to see, it's very much like a purple. Like, like it's very much purple. Um, so we'll, we'll have a look once we get uh, the camera up again. I can move on to doing my hair, finally. <laughs> and then nails! Hair shouldn't take too long. Na, 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 na. My base mirror, not the parent Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't think I have any other pale blues. I have a lot of lipstick. Um, but, but a pale green, like a an aqua sort of shade. But I don't think that's right. Um, I want some deeper blues, like that one, which is actually the color of the. Oopsie, hold on. Other way. Like it's blue. Uh, oh no! We did a lose! We did a lose! So I don't know. Yeah, it is. Purple then. I don't know what purple is. I'm told. Purple looks blue to me. Wait, no, no, no. Cancel. Start battle. That's what I wanted to do. Oops. There you go. I can't see red. Oh, my. oh I got eight kills. Sun Archer skin. Beautiful. And tokens. I can do that. It's even a token chest. Perfect time to get that one. Brilliant. Um, Varian. Oopsie. Too close. Okay. 
So, to recap, we have orangey, brownie, red kind of color. We have pale blue. And we have Tokyo. This is from Mellow. I haven't gotten a chance to use this yet, but it's, um, it looks like it looks brown in the tube, but if you can see the color on the wand there, like on the, the, the white part of the wand, it's quite purple. Um, so that's fun. You really can to tell it's yellow instead of green. Oh, little letters look screen to me sometimes. Ah, you got a skin! Yay, Sam! Well done. Ah, uh, orangey color is my vote. I reckon it's probably going to be the best kind of go with. Um, the other option was that, um, a couple of... I really like my interesting lipsticks. Um, <laughs> so I have... This was that dark blue that I kind of smells like marshmallows. Um, and then I've also got this one, which is slightly more purple than the last, like it's still blue, but it's a more purple blue than this one. Um, Colors top lip versus bottom lip, or is blending possible? Blending is absolutely possible. That took you the pair of cool too. So what do I think of red, yellow, blue, plus black and white? I think I see a lot of other colors, but a lot of them I have to be told. Learn a few like orange, green. Oh, cool, interesting. Um, uh, the second is so pretty. Like the this one. The dark blue, best of both worlds, Imo. So this one or like having them next to each other, like they look super similar, but there is, there is a very, very slight difference. Kind of cool. Hey, I wonder if I can get the difference to show up if I swatch. Ah, uh, that's got black on it. Okay. That's going to be interesting. Did you? I did an ombre of black and blue, and so this has got black lipstick on it still, which would make it look different. Okay, so. There you go. Now can you see the bloody difference? <laughs> some of you will some of you will be able to see it very easily. Some of you might not, and that's okay. Uh, but there you go. So different, right? Yep. <laughs> Definitely gold tube. Okay. We can go gold tube. Oh, which is the purple blue. Now you can see it. Yeah, it's it's kind of difficult to see when they're so condensed and but when you actually swatch my oh actually while I've got makeup on my hand, this is Tokyo. But then like obviously because it's liquid you can kind of Build it up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, from Scotland, hello, sir. Where's my married one? Divorce, that's irrelevant. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. No, for sort of reason. no, that's okay. And that's totally fine. But yeah, I sort of like, yeah. <laughs> Blue versus violet, yeah. Not a fan of blue trains, slow stick, unless you go into a punk or goth concert. Totally fine. I like fun colors. I've got tons of purples and greens, and yeah, they're awesome. Especially pop when you've got such pale skin. A bit color looks the same to me. Freaking love Tokyo, yeah. Doesn't fit with the rest, yeah. It, it doesn't fit with the look either, I don't think, personally. Um, all right, gold tube. This is, um, this is actually L'Oreal. This is from Priceline. It was a limited edition, though. 
and um, it was a collaboration they had with Balmain, the, uh, 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 what's it, fashion house. Uh, and the shade is called Rebellion. Brights are really difficult to... If you go outside the lines, it's really bloody obvious. <laughs> there you go. God, it's a beautiful shade. And it goes really well with this whole look as well. I'm very happy with that. Um, is this going to come off my hand? Probs not. Let's try. That sort of did. I don't think Tokyo will. Oh, okay, no, we're good. <laughs> that slid a whole lot faster than I was anticipating it to. I hadn't dried yet. Perfect. And now it looks like I've bashed the back of my hand. It looks like I've bruised it. Perfect. I'll wash that later. But at least I can't get it all over me now. Wonderful. Um, cool. There we go. Very kawaii. <laughs> All right. So, oh, wait. Yeah, actually, I have to take the headset off anyway. Try not to push the buttons. There we go. That works. Settings, bro. Keeps everything on just a bit longer. Kind of like, think hairspray, but for your face. In fact, they used to use, before they made and formulated setting sprays, um, they used to use hairspray to keep everything sealed in. But this stuff, it does a similar thing. It kind of merges your layers. So you've got like powder on powder on powder on powder. This sort of makes everything just a touch damp and kind of makes it one and just merges everything together. But it also helps it stick to the face a bit better through more kind of um, sweat and day-to-day -day everything. Uh, yeah just kind of brings it all down to down to the same level so where did I tuck that there we go face glue a little bit but it's a lot more comfortable than glue oh, my hair's a little oily that's all right though I'm sure it'll still look fine okay so yeah All of the disclosures today. This is my Wylera hair Dream Wave. This is in the shade Black Onyx. They also make one that comes in, uh, they also make the same thing in Gatsby Rose, which is just another colorway. It's shiny pink rather than black. Um, it beeps a lot. That's what the beeps are like. All of them are identical to that. Um, and I am affiliated with Wailera hair. So if you, after this demonstration, decide, or now, <laughs> decide you want to pick one up for yourself or their Dreamwave Compact or their Dream Styler, which is a straightener or any of their other bits or bobs, if you use code Fiamma, you'll get 20 bucks off your order. So keep in mind that I am affiliated, but you can't really fake live video, can you? So I'm gonna show you how I do my hair, in my hair, it's very greasy. It's a lot greasier than I thought it'd be, which is unfortunate. If I'd known, I would have washed it earlier, but that's fine. 
That's fine. When my hair's oily, it doesn't hold everything quite as well, which is going to suck for the whole demonstration side of things, but that's fine. We'll just see how it goes. Just see how it goes. Um, so the reason, so I bought this, this is not, this was not a gift from the company or anything. I bought this. I actually bought it for myself for my birthday and um, I liked it so much that I went browsing their website. I went to their website intending to email them to contact them. And then I realized they had like an affiliate section on the website. So I went through and applied and they granted me a discount code. And I know, I know that at least a couple of people have taken advantage of the offer because I've been paid. And being paid is wonderful. Oh, thank you. That double beep means it's ready to go. It's ready to be used. All right, I'll just make sure that it's an even split roughly. Of course, it's never going to be perfect unless you use like a comb to part it or whatever, but all right, so if those beeps were too much for you, this whole section of the stream is probably going to be too much for you uh, because it beeps constantly when it's actually in operation to let you know it's working. So you grab a little bit like so, pop it through the slot, you hold the button down, it sucks the hair in, and then it starts to beep. Do a scroll. Maybe I do. Hello, Barry. Hello. Okay. Double beat means it's done. And then, oh, kick that out the way. Go to the next one. Um, I still do. I <laughs> definitely grew up using hairspray. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Hello. Hello. What's up? Did you oh, it's down there. Sorry. Um, so on the, like, it has obviously like temperature settings and stuff like that. It defaults to 180 Celsius. So that's what I use. And that's kind of like the healthy level to, to do it. But if you need warmer because your hair is coarse or whatever, that's fine. Um, it also has left and right settings. So the, what, the way I've figured out to remember, because the idea is that curls are supposed to curl away from your face like that. Um, like naturally that's what they tend to do. So what I figured out is that use the left, because I mean, it describes the direction of the curls, but who can remember that? Um, use the left setting when it is, like if someone is looking at you, this will be the left and this will be the right, or use the inverse of yours. So use the left on the on your right hand side and then use right on your left hand side. Nice and, oh God, that smells amazing. I think we're having chips for dinner. Um, oh, oh, double beep. Basically, you know, what have you had? Great smile before that's really the great smile lasts longer. <laughs> I mean, it would depend on your muscles, wouldn't it, Root? I just realized how good for you would look with a side. Do you mean a side shave? Yeah, nah. <laughs> nah, I, I like the fact that my hair is so versatile. Like, I could. I could braid it back and make, you know, have the illusion of it for a bit, but then I can put it back where I like it. I'd not, I could never, I could never shave any of my hair. My hair is too thin to like want to, yeah, I know some people do like an undershave because the hair is so thick and it cools them down and stuff. I just don't, it, it I'm, it's, my hair is super, super thin, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's a, it's a nope from me, but there are so many people out there who absolutely rock it and it's amazing and gorgeous and holy cow but yeah not for me not for me does it curl your hair clockwise or counterclockwise both it's a setting on the screen on the front yes you're on a hair straightener which is that when you're using uh uh 170 i think i paid for it maybe i don't remember i know it's under 200 and then of course i have the discount code as well I'm sorry, I cannot remember. My brain is not that good. But yeah, it's not, it's, and it's wireless. If you hadn't noticed, there are no cables. It's not plugged in. Um, it's, it's wireless, which is extremely handy. What am I doing? There we 
go. I'm trying to grab a section of hair, but it was too big and then it was connected to other stuff and it was just, it was a whole mess. But it's fine now. Everything is fine now. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Dry shampoo to the rescue. I do have some dry shampoo over there, but um, not. Uh, nah, it'll be fine. What is it? It's gonna be my mixed up. Is beepy fun? Yep. Look, I mean, for some people the beeps are super irritating. For others, it's like ASMR. So like, I don't, I don't, I'm not offended. I will not take it personally if this is not your jam. Um, I am totally okay with that. You gotta take care of you. Like a microwave I can never open. Oh, Ali, I'm sorry. Um, that's not, that's too much. You don't want to have, if you, so the more hair you put in at once, obviously the faster it's going to go to do your entire head, but the looser the curl, curl will be because obviously like it's only got so much space in the chamber and it's only got so much heat that it can put out. So if you're putting bigger chunks of hair, the heat won't go through all the hair quite as well. So you're better off staying with like smaller chunks of hair, but like, yeah. Marvel that one. Not only is it wireless, but it has an extra port on the bottom. The top one there is a charging. It charges with the like the USB-C thing. The bottom one, the actual USB port, it works as a fucking power bank. <laughs> it acts as a power bank. I literally used this last night to, to partially charge my phone because it was dying and I wasn't sitting anywhere near a plug. It it operates as a power bank. It truly is a travel thing. I hurt when you pull it out. No, not at all. Um, so it holds onto it while it's in there, but then it completely releases it as you as you like separate. There's no, it doesn't even tug your hair. Even like when it's sucking everything in, there's no sensation at my scalp at all. Like no sensation whatsoever. Yeah, I yeah, I don't know how it works, but it's magnificent and magic and amazing, and I really actually enjoy it. And and the curls stay put, which is something that I can't say for any other curler I've ever used. Maybe I was just using them wrong, but good lord. Um, pulls the hair and spins it around. How does it manage to not pull the hair? I don't know. I do not know. Maybe if I can turn... Yeah, you can see the hair sort of. Let me see if I can... Just down the barrel. I can't show you down the... So... I can do that, but I can't show you while the hair is in it for obvious reasons. Uh, but like, I know it rotates and then it stops and then there's hair there. That's, that's all I know. So not brilliant, it's just magic. Yep, correct. I don't know how it works, but it does. And it's just, Amazing. Like, look at that. Look at that. You're welcome, Ali. No worries. I'm glad I could actually do what you were after. Now, I'm really getting a little bit nervous because I used this to charge my phone a little bit last night. I'm worried that I've drained. Oh, but I did have it plugged in before. I should be fine. If I piss fun around, if I sit here and, uh, na, 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 and leave it on the whole time, it dies before I've done all my hair because I'm an idiot. But if I actually sit here and intentionally do my hair, it will have more power. Like it'll still be able to charge my phone once I've done the whole head. Um, so the battery is pretty good. But you do like after you've used it, plug it in. Because the next time you go to do it, you won't be able to get through your whole head. Beep, beep, beep. Is it hot on the outside? No, it is warm, but it's not like I can I can hold that comfortably. Very, very comfortably. It's definitely warm, um, but it's like my heat packs are hotter. My like my wheat packs that I use that I stick in the microwave, they're much, 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 much warmer. Um like <laughs> a lot warmer. I think because there's that air gap, because it's got that post in the middle and then there's the full air gap around it, I think that provides enough sort of, like if I put my hand over, okay, it's got hair in it, so I can't really feel anything. Give me a second. If I, so over the top, it's quite warm. 
But like even putting my hand over the front of that, I can't. Yeah. You'd have to you'd have to like stick your fingers in it to try to burn yourself. Don't do that. Like <laughs> do not insert fingers into curler. Pretty sure that's a Yeah. Uh, if really wants to chew the hair, I'm amazed. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Like, this is just... Same as the hair, same as the straightener, or less. It's 180 degrees Celsius. So, heat treating hair will damage hair, but it's heat treating to 180 degrees, so it's going to do as much damage as using any other heat tool at 180. Um, and if, if you up that temperature, it'll do as much damage as any other tool at whatever temperature you set it to. So yeah, it's not like it doesn't have some, it is ceramic. So it's not a, it's not metal in there. It's, it's a ceramic heating thingamajig. Um, so it'll, it'll do as much damage as any other ceramic tool will do, if that makes sense. But I do feel like, I, mean, I know my hair always felt really rotten after doing the straighten a twist technique. Like, you know, you clamp it and you kind of wrap, like you do at the top and then you kind of twist it and you drag it down your hair. My hair always felt really horrible after that. And it tugged at my hair as well. I just, I didn't like it. None of that, like, because this wrap, it, what I'm feeling like it, because it sucks in that tail of hair. Like, can you actually see? Because it like sucks, 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 sucks all the way in. I feel like it's wrapping it around the barrel and then it sits and heats it and then you just take it off. So it's not actually like clamping and dragging the hair. So it's not doing that mechanical damage, but it's still doing the heat damage. Like you're not going to avoid that. That's just any, any tool that tells you that, oh, you won't heat damage your hair using this heated implement is bullshit. Um, <laughs> like that's, that's just a blatant lie. Um, but yeah, so I mean, obviously you've got to be comfortable with heat treating your hair to, to do this kind of stuff. Absolutely. Beep, beep. Oh shit. Okay. Um. Sorry. All the lipsticks out the way. Thank you. Yum. Amazing. I could smell the chippies. Thank you so much. I thought we should. I mean, yeah. Also, they're delicious, so I'm not going to complain. <laughs> Thank you, Jess. Um, it probably uses physics to hold the hair spinning just fast enough rather than anything. Well, it's not spinning anymore. I'm not sure if you can hear. Can you hear it whir when it does the... So the whirring noise, the stops as soon as it starts beeping. All right, so I'm now going to change it to... Right, right curl. So see, these curls are like, did I curl the wrong way? No. So those curls are going that way. These curls are going to go the other way because that's how it's supposed to work, apparently. Um, so that's all of those. Let's do, let's make sure I'm getting all the little bits of hair that need to be curled still. And we start on this side. But yeah, so it does like the whir, 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 whir. and then as soon as the first beep starts, it stops its whirring. I'm going the top rather near the gears makes it safe. Hey, Alexi. I think she be tonight too. Yes, these are like shoestring fries as well because I'm like, like I love my chunky chips, but sometimes you just want something a little bit different. I don't know, let me find out. Hang on. Let me just get this, oop, that's too much hair. Mm -mm. No. You get a feel, like once you've done this enough, you get kind of a feel for how much hair is enough hair in your fingers. Yeah, either way, yeah, perfect. 
Spin to capture them. It's just twisted on itself in a small space. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Where has the straight hair gone? It's gone, dupe. It's disappeared. Devil magic. And I love it. Isn't it funky? Like, I love pulling it down there and then just watching this, like, beautifully curled hair unravel itself from the tool. Like, it's amazing. I'm also absolutely highlighting this whole thing and sending it to them and being like, hey, look, content. <laughs> Um, and of course, just hypothesizing. Yeah, like for sure. I reckon, you know, when you see that, um, there's like that thing that you can see, like it flashes almost. There you go, you can see there. I reckon there's a plate that it kind of grabs the hair and sort of lays it around as it spins. It's got to be something like that, but I just don't know the exact. And you know what? It's probably hidden for a really good reason. Something like there are so many of these on the market. But, um, like, a lot of them are done by, like, I've seen a lot of them on, like, TikTok and Instagram ads, and I'm fairly sure there was going to be a bunch of them on Snapchat ads as well. But a lot of them use, like, an image of someone using one like Wailera, but then it's selling their own off-brand one on Alibaba or something. So, like, when it comes to heat tools, I know you can get cheap versions. I know you can get this stuff at like a fraction of the price and all that kind of thing, but it's not worth it. It's not worth it. You risk 180 degrees not being 180 degrees. You risk one of the one of the parts not quite functioning or not being at the correct space to allow the hair to be captured properly and it grabs it and it rips it out or off. Like there's just there's so many things that can go wrong with tech that can heat up specifically. You could have it catch fire while it's holding your hair. Like you just don't, it is worth making sure you spend the money on a reputable brand. It's just not worth the risk. Don't do it. Mm. Yeah, sure I can. Absolutely no man, for sure. Okay, so if I grab so the destructions say not to use more than two centimeters of hair. All right, this is quite a bit more. Um, what was it actually? Let me grab a little bit more. Yep, this is a fairly sizable chunk compared to what I have been doing. Um, so there is gonna be an amount of hair that is too much. Um, but that's going to be different for everyone, I reckon. Um, is that your natural hair color? Absolutely not. <laughs> no. Um, I'm naturally a dark blonde, light brown. So there you go. So that's got, that had more hair in it. And so it's a bit of a, like, you can see that it's a bit longer than the other ones because it's done a looser curl and it hasn't quite had the heat in it to make it as bouncy and curly and stuff. Uh, but it's still, it's still a decent curl. It's just a bit more... Uh, a bit softer, maybe. Maybe that's a good word for it. Uh, but no, uh, my hair is Manic Panic. The shade is Vampire Red. And I use uh, the amplified colour rather than their classic original colour. Which was it good. I'm glad you're enjoying it. I'm going to do the see what happens inside the device. Exactly, do. Exactly. Let me know how fast it is. Yeah! That, and that's the big thing is one of the things I like, I love having curly hair. I love how I prefer my hair curly to straight. Um, the problem is it takes so goddamn long and it makes my arms hurt because I have really weak arms and all this kind of like, it's just not fun. This stuff, I can get it done in not like, I mean, you're watching how long it takes in real time. I, there's a battle about to start. Um, how do you manage split ends? Uh, I get haircuts. And that's okay, Ali, no worries. Mm. This is New Zealand rock player, the most popular trick. Dupe, are you a wiki bot? Are you the bot and not seeker? Is that what's is that what's going on here? Alright, I'm gonna pop this one in and then I'm gonna press the go button on Stream Raiders. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Instrument citation here. <laughs> You're hilarious. And you can go one handed, so, uh. I just remembered that Seeker sent me photos of her device because Seeker got hers in um, Gatsby Rose, the, like the other colorway. And I just remembered she sent me photos for me to use on socials. And I've been doing my socials for June, and I totally forgot. And I'm so happy because it's one post I don't have to worry about. <laughs> Hello, Clarissa. How are you going? Welcome on in. Hope you're having a fantastic day. kind of feeling like with this whole look I should be doing like navy and like blue and orange or blue and gold nails. Thor and Ellie and Ducks and Root and Neke and Mick and Zam and Rain. Rain. And uh, Fats on all your bonus shit. Well done. Let me grab this slot out from under here. Let's do that little baby bit. Yay, bonus shit, well done! How did I not earn, I'm sure I earned those quest tokens. Event tokens, rather. Okay. And then this little bitty. You can absolutely go through, like when I started using this, I went through and I actually partitioned hair out and like used my little pass, you know, the, the um, comb with the metal tail and all that kind of stuff. But it just, it took a while and it resulted in the curler dying um, towards the end. So I had to go and charge it and then curl the rest of my hair, which was a little bit awkward. Um, and honestly, uh, so I did some did some videos, I did, watched some, some YouTube and stuff and with people who were demonstrating the Wailera and they just grabbed chunks and stuck it in there. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah, let's, let's try that. And I did, and I was really happy with the result. So if you want to be particular with it, you absolutely can. Just be aware that it will take you longer. And if you leave the device on the whole time, it will die faster. I mean, it won't die faster. It will die at the same amount of speed, but um, that will be... That will be longer. Uh, that will it will take you longer to do stuff. Um, so I'm gonna place this, and then the next bit of this. Multitasking, and then place battle plans. to soak in better uh no i mean yes you do absolutely need a bleach if you want any color to soak in better but um depending on your natural hair color 
there are a lot of colors out there that will just work will work just fine on darker hair. Um, this is one of the ones that does work just fine on darker hair. Keeping in mind though, I don't have like natural black hair or dark brown. My, my hair is naturally, like you can see, we might be able to see on the stream, you, like my, I've got regrowth coming through. My natural hair color is dark blonde, light brown, like right on that border between the two colors. So, um, yeah, like my hair drinks up dye, like it's nobody's business as well. So it's always, and it always has no matter the brand. Uh, but if I had bleached my hair, this would be a far more vibrant, bright, bright red. Uh, but I didn't want to because um, my hair is crap enough as it is without also damaging it with bleach. <laughs> yeah, dark blonde's really easy to dye, yeah. But it does, it does, like it's not super platinum, so the colors do get changed a little bit, but. I didn't want like rainbow hair. I didn't want fire engine red hair. Like I wanted this color, so I'm I'm good with it. Um, yep. Yeah. Hello. Yay! You going all right? Yeah. I'm glad. Thank you so much for bubble tea and dinner. And chips are really tasty. Haven't had a chance to dig into the steak yet though. <laughs> it will not be cold yet. We're done. And it's two out of four bars of battery left. However, the last bar doesn't last very long. All right. So we're curled, but not everyone likes poodle curls. Like not everyone likes it like super, super like ringlets like this. So my hair is crap, just ignore this. I was always super afraid of brushing my curls because they always drop out so quickly. But these actually last long enough that brushing them works. There you go. Beautiful. Um, but yeah, so I mean, obviously you can do different stuff. Like my fringe is this is this is meant to be a fringe. I need a haircut. But um that's if you want the curl if you want those kind of beachy waves that start a little my hair is just trash. This is not because of the curler, this is because the ends of my hair are like hay and need to be cut off. But um, if you're the kind of person who prefers to have like the beachy waves lower, like so all of this, but like starting here, then you can just hold the curler here instead of at your roots and, and it'll just curl the ends and then you can brush it out and it'll do that kind of comes down to here and then the wavy kind of, yeah. So you can, you can do it how you like to do it. But um, there you go. Why layer a hair? amazing. Thank you, Dono. Thank you. Right. Nails. Um, I can now put this back on as well. This is gonna destroy everything, but it's fine. Headset hair is a, is a thing. And I'm still pretty happy with that. <laughs> Thank you, Tor. Much appreciated. Okay. Um, now I have to, give me a second because I have a thing but I need to move some stuff around. Okie dokie. Holy crap. Shit. I just lost a lipstick into the nether. Uh, that's gonna be a big ass problem. I will deal with that later. Um. out of my food, toss my scrunchie aside, brush can go away. How are we looking? I reckon we can do that. We might need to, might need to eat food and then, yeah, okay.
what we're looking at. Let's see here. Nails. But we need colors. Hey, Ro. Welcome back. Hey, Drake. Welcome on in. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Um, I've noticed you're using the no visuals um, badge. Just to let you know, today is very a, a very visual stream as I'm doing. I've done hair and makeup. I'm now on to some nail art and stuff, but I will do my best to describe what I'm doing um, so that you can still participate. I'm currently eating dinner, but <laughs> so how are we feeling about the colors? I've got a whole bunch of uh, nail polish swatch sticks that I'm gonna pop on camera. That's gonna be, I have to put the blue one on top of this one, I think. Even that's not gonna quite work, but that's all right. We'll make it work. Yoink. There we go. I still remember. Remember that green? There is, um, I have a couple of greens up this end. This one here, that really super, super shiny one is, um, freaking gorgeous. Um, but it's green and on certain angles and then blue on others. It's not showing super well on camera because we all know that the camera can't pick up on yellow greens very well. Um, but it's just the most beautiful color. But that's why it's up with the greens because it does it does go green at, at certain angles, but um, it's tricky for the camera to figure out. Hey, Scam. Brilliant, Scary. Enjoy the enjoy the events. Uh, it says orange. My mind says match the lips. Well, here's the thing. I do have these. I know Sheeps wanted to see stamping, so I have. Oh, I have stamping polishes. So I could, for example, go with yeah, yeah, that kind of a shade, that copper sort of color over something like this. Super vibrant, deep blue. Is it actually like... Yeah, the camera's just not picking up how beautiful and deep that color is. But then having like the stamping polish over it with some kind of fancy ass design. Like there are there are lots of options here. We don't have to stick with one color. No. Uh -oh. I also knocked the camera. Apologies for that. The blue stunning. It is. It's called Palm Springs, and it's absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> really should have got my stamping plates up. I'm a bit of an idiot. <laughs> So thinking blue. Mm. So the split wouldn't be too difficult though, not at all. Um, I have like um, painting guides, like tape that you can kind of separate bits off and stuff like that. But the problem would be that that tape 
you need the polish underneath it to be completely 100% dry. And that can take an hour plus, depending on the polish you use. Some of them only take like 15, 20 minutes, but some of them take a full hour plus to actually dry completely. Because otherwise when you put the tape on it and then you paint and then you pull the tape up, it rips up the polish that it's stuck to and everything goes to shit. So um, yeah, that, <laughs> it's absolutely something I could do and it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be difficult. It'd just be really time consuming. I'm not sure we have the time for it to die. <clears throat> Oopsie. Hmm. Base coat. Um, you might notice that my nails are a bit funky colored. It's because I had a red on before and I only used one, one uh, layer of base coat because I'm an umpty. Um, so ideally you have two coats of base. Two coats of color, and then your top coat. Base coat helps the nail polish stick, kind of like your primer. And it also helps protect the nail from staining. Helps. Doesn't completely, but it helps. Oh God. All right, this angle is terrible for trying to do this. Um, I'm trying to figure out, I think I might need elbow room. So I think I might have to quickly finish up dinner before I continue this. Yeah, it does. I was trying to get my, um, so I've got my hand underneath the tripod for the camera and it's just a tiny mini baby tripod. So it's, um, I keep almost bonking it with my hand and uh, also completely botching the application, which is fine for base coat because you can't see it. But if I botch the application of the color, you're absolutely gonna be able to see it and it's gonna look bloody terrible. So I'm using the base coat I'm using today. I'm trying to use up. Um, strengthening base coats make your nails. Good. Uh, strengthening base coats make your nails quite brittle over time. Um, there, the idea is usually like, you know, you put on two coats and then you put on another coat every day and for a week and then you take it all off and start again. And it'll make your nails stronger for sure. But if you bash them on something, instead of them bending, they'll just snap. Sally Hansen's Miracle Cure is a strengthener, um, but I'm not using it as directed. I'm using it for its base coat properties instead of its strengthening properties. Mm. I love good steak. <clears throat> mm. It is absolutely panic when you bash your nail and something on something and it breaks. It was like the other day on stream. Like I did something like that with my hand and I ripped off the tip of one of my nails. Just completely sheared it off. First nail break I've had in a while though. I usually take pretty good care of them. Good steak. Mmm. 
Is there any other kind? I've had some complete disasters of steaks before. Yeah. Me too. Me too. I would honestly say that it's quite easy to botch a steak. You push open up. Ooh. Fancy. I wonder if I'm going to be able to get... This is my offhand, like I'm using my non-dominant hand to paint. So it's going to be awkward as hell. Usually I just wouldn't show this side, but like, stream. God, this is terrible. So difficult. Trying to do it at a good angle so you can actually see is like the hardest thing. Because usually, I just do this. Maybe I just do this word chat. This base coat also dries pretty quickly, so I'll be able to pop on the other one shortly. Very fancy butcher. Ooh. I'm gonna buy that as farm to table. That could be fun. Some good chicken salt. Yum. Awesome jerky too. Good to hear. Good to hear. Good jerky is so good. Shipping. So we settled on the blue, the bright blue with the um, like rose gold stamping, copper, copper sort of. <laughs> Next question is what kind of stamping? do the blue. Okay. Hopefully that was whoop. Okay. Where's that cable catching? Is that gonna be like I try not to move this too much because I know it make this kind of stuff makes people kind of ill. That's going to be too. Actually, can I rotate that hole? Can, but there's the leg is going to. I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, that looks like trash. Okay, good. Noted. Hmm. 
Yeah, that'll... And I can rotate the camera around. Okay, that's fine. <clears throat> that's fine. Not sure what I mean by what kind of stamping. Um, so I have, so stamping is done by uh, using plates. So you get a stamping plate that is laser etched. It's a metal plate that is laser etched with a bunch of designs. Um, you put a blubber nail polish on the plate you use a scraper to scrape it over the laser etched design, which makes it a really, really, really thin layer of a very pigmented stamping polish. And then you pick it up with a silicon stamper, pick your upper -y thing, uh, and then you roll it over the nail. And it applied like the, the by at this point, still wet polish um, comes off the, oh my God, this is the most awkward thing I've ever bloody, okay. Um, comes off the silicon stamper and transfers onto the still very slightly tacky nail. Um, so I have a handful, I think I have 10 stamping plates, which are all different designs. So kind of stamping refers to the kind of design. None of them are uh, gaming related. They're all from the same brand and it's not a gaming, like, not, not a brand like that. Um, not a pop culture brand. Uh, one of them, I have a sci-fi plate that's lots of like circles and lines. One of them looks kind of like a motherboard, but, um, I don't know how many navy blue or like cobalt blue um, motherboards there are out there, so I think it might look a little bit strange if we tried to go for that sort of. Yeah. Um. Everybody, welcome to stream. Yeah, huh? Yeah, huh? She's so keen to see the stamping. Maybe, but um, is Sheebs actually here or is Sheebs just like super duper lurking? So anti-talent on this, it looks so nice. It practice, it's super, super, super practice. Like for real, this stuff is super easy to do. It just takes practice. There are some parts of it that um, may be like, there may be physical limitations to it. Um, for example, there are some days where I have like tremors in my hands, not often. And they're not super bad. Like I'm not throwing stuff everywhere or anything like that. Um, but I do have very minor hand tremors. So for day-to-day -day tasks, like holding a knife and fork and stuff, I'm perfectly fine. But for like detail work like this, no. Nah. I just, I can't do it that day. And that's fine. I just kind of, I'm, lucky enough or, or uh, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for the fact that I have, I have good days where those aren't things. So I just kind of wait for a good day with the patience. I'm kind of, it's a good thing that I don't really care if I've got chipped polish. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a prompt for me to redo them, but it's not really going to bother me. Like if I'm super, super busy or if it's a hand tremor day, I'm, I'm not going to be like angry at the situation. It'll just be like, oh, well, I guess I'll do something else today. Like get something else on my to-do list done. Um, but yeah, so there are, there are definitely some physical limitations to doing this kind of stuff. But um, if those don't apply to you and it's literally just a skill level thing, the beautiful things about skill is that they can be developed. You can practice, and it's not an expensive skill to develop either. If you want to protect your nails, you can grab a base coat. You can grab a bottle of nail polish in a color that you like. Um, you can optionally grab a bottle of stamping polish and a stamping plate and a stamper and a scraper. And the stampers and scrapers usually come like in a little pair together. Um, and then you just practice. And the, it's it's kind of like the thing with makeup, you know, makeup is beautiful and fun and awesome. And you can wash it off at the end of the day. Same thing goes with nail polish. 
if you don't like the way it looks, you can take it off. And you use such little product. When you do, like a, a bottle of nail polish is more like it's unless you redo them twice a week and you only ever use that one bottle, it's probably going to dry out before you actually use all of it. So it's not like you're wasting money by practicing and then just taking it straight off again. Like it's not that big a deal, if you know what I mean. Mm. Mm. Oh my gosh, that was a little. Wow, far out. Um, I I do. I don't. I haven't had it. Like I haven't had it diagnosed. I do have an autoimmune condition, but I don't think it's got anything to do with that. I think it's just my body being shit. Um, so there are some days where it'll just kind of like I won't be able to hold quite steady. I've never gotten to the point where it kind of does a. Uh, like a jerk or anything like that. It, it's all, and some, sometimes I'm like a little bit, like it'll it'll just sort of like that sort of level, but it's not. I, I have insomnia um, and I have autoimmune condition um, and a cyclothermic disorder, which is like bipolar, but fast. So um, if I've had a string of like, so with like, like with most things, like as with most conditions, um, I, I have bad days and I have worse days with my insomnia. So if I've had a string of worse days, then the, like, I, that's when I start kind of feeling like my, like I'm a bit weaker and my, my hands, like I can't quite control them the way I want to, to do like detail work and things like that. Um, and also, if I haven't been eating well, in in conjunction with the insomnia, it it exacerbates it. It makes it worse. Um, so yeah, it's not. I've I've not had the experience of like you described shooting into the sky. I haven't had those kind of things happening. Um, but there are there are little things like recognizing like if I'm carrying my my teapot, not my teapot, my my teacup. And that like, I've got a teacup and saucer. And if I'm carrying those and it's quite full, um, I, I consciously kind of go, my hand doesn't feel right. I'm gonna squeeze a little tighter. Cause if I if I squeeze tight, like if I actually kind of squeeze my hands together, just a bit like I'm not not in a fist, but like if I press my fingers against each other, just activating the muscles seems to make it better for that short period of time. Like, do you know, you know what I mean? Maybe you don't know what I mean, and that's that's okay too. But um, it's like if they're relaxed, they'll tremor a little bit. But if I, I if I engage the muscles, then they'll behave themselves. Um, but yeah, so it's not it's not that bad, if that makes yeah. I, I'm trying really hard not to minimize what I experience, but also not to minimize what others experience, like yourself, because it's not okay. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. His fears it is. Yes, beeping is over. Has beautiful curls. Brushed through and everything. Hey, going, Barry. Let's see. Welcome back. But yeah, I wouldn't be keen on brain surgery either, personally. Like, it's what makes me who I am, you know? It's kind of a, a terrifying. I mean, Obviously, if it got to a point where it was a like it was a requirement of, of treatment or whatever, depending on where I was in terms of age, depending where I was in terms of dependence and all that kind of stuff, then you know, I talked to the doctor about it. But brain surgery is absolutely like a, a last resort, methinks. Um, Lindsay, my hands is with they're also broken. That's okay, Barry. That's okay. Zam, Meaty, Lander, Absolute, Thor, Martin, Dunno, and Rel. Congratulations to all of you on your bonusship. Well done. Good job. Good job. Mm, just ADHD, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, how do you go with like uh, like keep cups and that kind of thing? The the things with lids. 
does it does it help at all? Like in case you have a, a tremor, if it's got like a lid on it and it's shut, like if you swing the thing around and it's completely closed off, so you don't kind of toss it around and stuff. Like, does that is that something that helps, or is that a total other layer of difficulty with actually like working with the keep cup? Um, good though. I'm glad to hear that, Barry. Yay. Um. Uh, Dupe, unfortunately, Lexi apparently has a broken keyboard. Uh, I've been told from other streamers. Yep. Even though, you know, there is accessibility options and you can turn the caps off through the on-screen keyboard, but whatever. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Rightio, so we have metal cups a lot, put up my hands, that computer without lids, yeah, for sure. Well, that's, I'm glad to hear it helped though in, with something. Like that's, that's a good thing. Cause I know like, I mean, obviously there are environmental solutions which are fantastic for the plant and all that kind of stuff, but a lot of them don't work for disabled folk. Like a lot of people genuinely need these environmentally unfriendly bits and bobs to kind of, yeah. It's uh, the, like the single use plastic ban was a, a huge thing in the, disabled community like it anyway uh this one we're gonna go with this beautiful blue it's from Seattle it's called palm springs and it's number 50 so let me Ooh. where are you there you are uh, do a mixy mixy so yeah it's uh fun fun things to I get so mad. Ah, dear. Yeah, I've got uh, a few friends who um, uh, are unable to drink without straws. Like they they need a straw to be able to intake liquid and um, as wonderful as metal straws and all that kind of stuff is they're really difficult to clean if you have issues with hand mobility and stuff like like, like threading the little scrubby brush into it and holding it under water and and doing all the like it's there's those motions to clean them are really difficult and you can't just stick them in the dishwasher As, or, or if you you know god forbid you want to have a, t a tasty drink that has some sugar in it and then you put it away and it gets all sticky because it's dried on like you yeah it's um yeah. <clears throat> um. Different things I can this one. Um, I have uh, psoriatic arthritis. Uh, we went through a few different diagnoses before we got to this one, and I'm on this one because the treatment for it seems to work. <laughs> but it uh, it has co it, the other the old treatment I was on caused a few issues, but the one I'm on now seems to be okay. I'm just thinking it's so hard. Yeah. Yeah. Hey Lexi, have you used the on-screen keyboard before? I know that your keyboard's broken, but you can turn your caps lock off. Yes, Bubble Tea Club does sell retractable straws and their own little screw canister thing. They're absolutely cute as hell. So if you are someone who doesn't have difficulty using a reusable straw and you'd like one that's easier to travel with. Yep, on-screen keyboard. Lexi, it's part of accessibility. So if it is at Windows key and R, and then you type in O S K, and then hit enter, it comes up with a whole keyboard on your screen, and there's a caps lock button on it, and it'll work. You can click it, and it turns off your caps, and then you can use the rest of your keyboard as normal. So you don't have to yell at everybody anymore. So the reason I said it's fifty, um, I have. So this is it the right way around. Palm Springs, it has a 050 there. Because I have a lot of them. This is the bottle. And it has a 50 on the top. And that's because when they're all sitting in yeah, the drawer together, I can see which one is which at a glance. <laughs> and of course they're in the drawer in numerical order, so it's really easy to figure out where they all are. 
Pops hit. Anyone who has the same issues as I do. Um. I don't know what was Lixie chatting. Ah, uh, the username. <laughs> uh, is Jeffany arthritis expert? Not enough steroids runs aware. So last year I can get physio and it might help. Yeah. Uh, I am not on a monoclonal. Um, happy Nation, I love it. Well, I kind of have to. Like, I mean, I've got, like, and, 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 so, yeah. What number is the last one numbered? Oh, I can't even see. Move that. 153. The highest number I have stuck on the bottle is 153. It was later and yeah. Alrighty. So many reds. Yeah, I um look, red nail polish is a thing. <laughs> red nail polish is a thing. Not much at all. No, not at all. Definitely not. Alrighty. Let's put some colour down. Magical organization is my love. Brilliant. Yeah, no, I have a million and one spreadsheets. I actually have so I have a makeup spreadsheet, right? Um and because I have so much makeup, it helps. So I, I have, there's a whole tab in, the, it's a Google sheet. Um, and one tab is for nail polish. And so I have the brand, I have the name of the color, I have the size of the bottle, I have whether or not I like it. And then like some notes about, you know, or how many coats it takes to be, um, uh, what's it? That, that row, that column's not quite complete yet, but it's like how many coat, how many layers to be opaque. Uh, that kind of stuff. So, you know, if I'm, if I'm in a rush, I need to grab one that's like one coat opacity. Um, and like a little one sentence kind of review uh, on it, if you will. Um, but the key thing for me, and I have the same thing for my eyeshadow, even though I have 500 plus pans of eyeshadow and uh, a whole bunch of like my skincare, my hair care, my like other makeup, so like blushes and bronzes and blah, 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 blah. Uh, but the key part that I really love about the eyeshadow and the nail polish ones in particular is that the color, the, the cell that has the name of the shade, the color matches the product. On oh, the lipstick as well. Whoopsie, sorry. I keep knocking the camera because it's on a tiny tripod and this is really tricky to do. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to show you the stamping because this is going to be tricksy. I might actually have to, like, I wanted to do it this way, but maybe I have to do it like this way. Did the color just shift? I think the color shifted. You bastards. How? Why? Oh, it's because it's in the way of the light. That's why. Okay. That's fine. Um, but yeah, I just, I love that kind of, I mean, it's not a perfect color match because a color on a screen is never going to be able to replicate, like, for example, this metallic blue, especially with multi-chromes where you've got something that shifts color depending on, like, where you're looking at it and stuff like that. It's really dark all of a sudden. Let me, like so much darker than I thought it'd be. Let me see if I can fix that while that dries. <laughs> it's probably closer to where we should be. Okay, let's go with that. Perfect. Um. So all the nail, oh, I've got so many, so many. 153 split brushes. Oh, wide brushes are like the bestest. I can't like itty bitty tiny skinny brushes suck. They just I can't even. They they suck. Did the frame rate just go to trash as well? Maybe the exposure made it suck. 
Yep, same. Yeah, this is like, this is my non-dominant hand, so uh, yep. Usually with this hand, I kind of paint them by uh, like moving the hand against the brush rather than moving the brush against the hand, but that'll make the camera get really trippy. So I'm not sure that that'll... Yeah, always wrap the tip, by the way. That's what I'm doing when I kind of at the end there, when I've painted the nail. Um, you can do that and then like... Do that bit. And then doing that little bit under there. What that does is it wraps the paint around the tip of the nail. And uh, so you usually, your first chips will be at that tip. When you start getting chips on your nails, uh, it'll probably be from that tip because that's where it gets all the wear and tear. But having that wrapped around the tip there prevents it, like it, it helps protect against chipping. To the point that my nails, when they start to chip, they actually chip cuticle first, um, which I find really entertaining. I would almost call that one coat opacity, almost. There are a couple of spots, um, like, oh, for God's sake, Fia. <laughs> yeah, I totally just did that. Excuse me, it's still wet. Um, you can kind of see on that nail there, if I can get it in the light, you can kind of see, see, do you see how there's like that layer of blue polish at the end and then there's like a bit of almost like, it'll kind of looks green, but it's just that little tiny gap of, of nail showing through. Yeah, it's, um, I'd almost call that one coat. Oh God, that's terrible. I've missed like so much of the edges of my, of this hand just because I was trying to get them under the camera. I might just paint them normally next time because it sucks. But yeah, that's, uh, how we're looking so far. So shiny, yep, spreadsheet gods. <laughs> um, yes, Fiamma sheet is a thing. Can you modify full layer emotes? Nah, she became there. Let's use the artist. What is the orange tint old polish? Oh, on my nails? Yeah, it's just staining. The last nail polish I had, uh, I had one base coat instead of two. And it was red with like a crackle top coat over it. You know, the old school, like the polishes you'd paint on and then they'd kind of dry out and shrink up and it'd crackle and you'd see the color underneath show through. Yeah. Um, so I had red, bright red blood, like red, red polish with the black crackle coat on top. It looked awesome. It looked freaking cool. Uh, but it also stained the hell out of my nails. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's, that's staining. Um, you mean by point still no? Yeah, nah. No, nah. follower emotes are not uh, fiddly a bull. Cool, how are we going? Oh, we're still quite tacky. Way over here. Less tacky, but still. And I'm okay with touching them lightly and leaving a fingerprint if it's still tacky, because then when you put a top coat over it, it'll all even out. Like it's not gonna show the fingerprint in the top coat once you paint it over. Um, I reckon. What does it look like with sunglasses? Perfect, amazing, wonderful. Uh, all right. Uh, yes, this one. That's what I wanted. Mmm. Delicious. Okay. I reckon if I go slow with the second coat, by the time I get to the other hand, it'll be fine. I mean, I could absolutely leave this at one coat because I'm pretty happy with the uh, the coverage I've got, but um, I don't wanna, so I'm not gonna. Sometimes adding 
that extra coat adds a bit of depth as well. Mostly with sheer polishes, like if you've got a polish that's a little bit sheer when you put it down, I've got um, I've got one that's kind of oh, oh again a little bit sheer, uh, but it's like a deep dark brown, and then it has this glitter in it, this super fine glitter that uh, shifts purple and green and gold and blue, and when you put one coat on, you you just look like you have dirty nails. Like, it's disgusting and gross. Like, there's a little bit of the shimmer there, but it's mostly just brown ick. And then you put a second coat on, and you can still see the nail, but it's starting to look real shimmery. And then when you put the third coat on, it looks like a goddamn galaxy on your nails. Like, it's just beautiful. It is so worth waiting and putting in the effort to put multiple layer coats on instead of putting one thick coat to try to make it look good and then leaving it because a thick coat the middle of it like the top of it will dry but the middle of that thick coat will likely never dry and so you can still dent it and it'll also chip easier because it's not like paint all the way through it's uh yeah so you're much better off being patient it's like you know you can spend 10 minutes doing your nails now and have have them needing to be redone in three or four days or you can spend a good hour doing them today and not have to redo them for three weeks like it's that level of decision making um yeah plus it's a good excuse to watch netflix or whatever streaming service you prefer or stream, or pop something on and sit down and do your nails. Yeah, I'm not gonna do this under the camera because it's my non-dominant hand and I actually missed a whole lot of spots. So I need to like make sure it gets done properly. I also absolutely covered my cuticles, which is fantastic. I'm actually kind of glad I'm, we ended up with this color scheme because I've been meaning to take some like socials pics of my Fitbit since I got the thing. Thank you, Zarin. And uh, I was planning on doing like navy and rose gold nails, but this this could do. This could do. So I also was planning on doing navy and rose gold nails in like a similar pattern. Turn to the, the watch band and really like riffing on that. We'll see. Here we go, blue done. But like that's the, the watch band, like that navy and then like the geometric sort of, and then it's the rose gold face. Yep. So, but there we go. This is, uh, how gorgeous is that? Super pretty. Imagine that better off doing it right the first time. I know, right, Rel? But look, I totally get it. Sometimes you just need to do it, like put it on and go. Um, I would highly recommend if you are someone who often finds yourself going, damn it, I wish I had time to do my, my nails, but I have to leave in an hour or something, do you know what I mean? Like I have to leave really soon or a half an hour or 20 minutes or whatever it happens to be. But you're like, oh, I wish my nails were done. Get yourself some gel polish. I got a kit from Opalac. It cost me a hundred bucks. It came with the light, uh, the, like the base coat, the top coat, three colors, um, the remover and like little sticky pad things that I could wrap around my fingers and like let them sit to take the gel off. Taking gel off is horrendous. It is such a terrible experience and my nails always hate me for months afterwards. But if you are somebody who like wants done nails but doesn't have the time to do them very often, you can absolutely like you put on a base coat 
you cook it under the light for a minute and a half. You'd put the color on, cook it, another coat of color, cook it, top coat, cook it, wipe it, wipe the sticky stuff off, and you're good to go. They will not ding. They will, they're already cured, cured, not drying. So they will never dry unless you put them under the, under the light. But um, yeah, it, it's so much easier to like, you just do it and go. Um, I did that a while back because I was like, yes, I want nails done. And so I did them and I literally had those nails on for like two ass months and they had only just started to lift. <laughs> it, it, the stuff lasts forever. It's so good. And that's home stuff, not like, you can absolutely go out and get them done at a salon or whatever, but nah, bugger that. Just make sure you get the ones um, that cure with LED lights, not UV lights. There was um, a bunch of years ago, there was a whole lot of stuff around um, nail technicians who ended up getting like skin cancer in their fingers and around their nail beds and stuff. And yeah, because they've been, you know, putting their hands under UV light all the time for ages and UV causes cancer. So yeah, you can get like, my one is LEDs. It's not a UV light, it's literally just LED. And it, it cures the uh, the polish. Mmm. So the ones from Nailogically, yeah, Hollow Taco. I've got um, a base and a top coat, I think that I got as a hand-me-down from someone who they didn't work for her. And so she's hoping that, cause obviously nail chemistry, everyone's a bit different. Uh, so she's hoping that they work for me. Um, magnetic pattern ones, you can still get them. You can still get them. They're just, you just gotta hunt for them cause they're not like super popular anymore. Can you put a double coated thing in an extra single note? Oh, sorry. Um, no, because these are double coated as well. It's not, it's, Especially on, this is my old camera. This is the C922, C922. Um, so this one pr might not be able to tell the difference between the two, but I do apologize. I, I should have picked up on that first. Sorry, dude. Uh, it looks bolder. Yeah, it, it's just, it, it's got a little extra oomph to it. It's really hard to describe, but it is different and it is better. Uh, <laughs> Um, so for everything in life, I know, right? Which fit did you go with? D no, it's not gonna work. This one. Uh, it's the Versa 2. Um, definitely, like, not top of the line, but that meant it was a lot cheaper too. Ah, uh, girls, let me put a charge five, nice! Blue females indeed, hello, I see. I don't know, it's done professional place, they destroyed her nails, doesn't have one of her thumbnails anymore, oh god. So I think we don't even know where she went. Jesus. Yeah, see, I would have like, I would have immediately like gone to a doctor, gotten a diagnosis and then like taken that to, there's gotta be some kind of licensing board or something, unless it was some lady who was operating out of her, out of her home. Like if she went to an actual salon with a license and a lot, like you have to have a license to be able to operate those kind of businesses. I would have, yeah, I would have taken them out, like totally out. Mm. At least get them to pay for your um medical bills and stuff. All right, um, I reckon these are probably safe to stamp now. They're still a bit tacky. They're not dry dry. Like I wouldn't go folding my laundry right now, but um, they're good to stamp because stamping doesn't really involve a whole lot of like attacking. So let me, should have done this before I painted my nails. I am an empty, good. Oh, I'm very good at this. You can go there. Oh yeah. This is my nail stuff. <laughs> Polishes are over there. Base coats and top coats are over there. But this is all like the nail art bits and bobs. I have like a lot of them. Okay. Here. I need. You. I need all of you. I'm trying to do this really carefully. And I think I'm succeeding. Maybe? Question mark? Brilliant. Okay. 
So this is the stamper and scraper I was talking about. Oh, I need that shit. Okay, that's fine. I'll get that in a second. So. Stamper. Scraper. Just a little plastic card thing. You can use like an old bank card or something if you want to do. Uh, and then that's clear so that you can see through it to like place your stamps exactly where you want to sort of thing. Yep, it's hard to show the camera, but you, you get it. This torture device. <laughs> hey, Shapeless. He says, ah, thank you. Much appreciated. We did all of this on stream. It's been great fun. It's all denial mode. Ah, that's all right. You take photos, it's all time stamped and stuff. That's like they can deny all they like, but if you can get if you can get a doctor to say this is what this is what happened. Yeah. That's okay. No worries at all, Tor. Uh, no worries. Enjoy your work done. I will see you soon. We'll see you soon. I'm glad you enjoyed the uh, the hints and chips. Um, so this this lovely torture device does this, and this it does look like a strawberry. It, well, it's not a strawberry to holler, but it's supposed to be. It's supposed to look like a strawberry, um, but it it does this. And this way, you can clean up stuff with acetone without getting it anywhere near your done nails. Because you need that to clean the uh, the stamping plates. That did not spread nearly as nicely as I wanted it to, but that's fine. So these are my beautiful stamping plates. Let me just grab my acetone before I forget. Ooh, I got a little bottle from eBay. And I then got a big, big bottle from Bunnings and I've been refilling the little one and keep the Bunnings one elsewhere. It's really super useful. Uh, okay, so we have stamping plates. They look, which one is this? So that's how they come in a little paper slip thing and you pull them out here. Hit me, holla. They're metal and they're laser etched, as I said. So this one here is, uh, as you can probably tell, um, snowflakes. It's like a winter, that was why it's holiday. This is supposed to be like a Christmas plate. Um, but like a whole bunch of geometric designs and stuff. And you know how I love my geometry. So that's, that's why I've got that one. So that's 57. That's festive 57. I have this one which is like your basic patterns and stuff. We have, this one is flower power, which is all sorts of like flowery designs, nail stencils, no. Nail stamping plates. Stencils you stick on, paint on, and then peel the stencil off, right? These work very differently. Things this is done nails with acetone. Yeah, this thing is amazing, and it was like not even ten bucks. That's Australian, obviously. Uh, so this is these are mandalas, which are absolutely beautiful, and the that's you can see the key light reflecting beautifully there. Um, those are mandalas, and then I have my probably my most used plate, uh, tartan. <laughs> what can I say? I'm a sucker for tartan. Um, I have Paisley, which is amazing. So the idea with this one, because the design covers the entire plate, you can paint literally anywhere and pick up any part of any of that and just kind of run with it rather than like a section. And then you stamp that on that. Yeah. Uh, I have Gothic plate, which is instead of like whole nail designs, this is like lots and lots of little individual ones that you can kind of work around with. Um, I've got, this is the sci-fi one I was talking about. And this is like, yeah, like it's supposed to look all computery and technical and stuff. Um, yeah. And then we have another festive one, which is Halloween because of course it is. Hello, have you met me? 
I know there's a battle. We will start it so uh, sh uh, bleh. We'll start it shortly. There you go. And then we have minimal. And I actually really love this plate. Um, so they might look a little bit strange just kind of as they are. But imagine like taking one of these diamond ones and doing it instead of like just stamping it in the middle of the nail, stamping it so that it overlaps at the top of the nail. So it kind of creates, you know, that half moon shape you have in your, if you look at your bare nails, you've got that kind of pale sort of, you can recreate that, but like with funky graphics and stuff. And you could put it coming in from the side of the nail or at the tip, or do you know what I mean? Like it's, you don't have to put the whole design on the nail, which yeah, anyway. So those are the ones that I have. Let's do the battle. Anyone see any that they really liked? That's pretty now. I crave strawberry. Yes, Lawrence. Yes. We're calling it tartan and not plaid, but it's not plaid. Plaid is different. They're two different patterns. No spaceships on the sci-fi one. No. No. I'm sure there would be other ones that have spaceships, but I was not interested in those. These are cool. They're very cool. You like the sci-fi one? Any others that are that are really like standing out? which one it is that I liked. <laughs> it was, okay. Mm, I'd like to see some tartan if it's doable. Certain countries call all tartanous part of Bugs Music Scott Smith, so thank you anyway. Fair. Fair enough. Tartan if it's doable. Where's my... It really upsets me that the tartan plate is called Hipster. Like part of the Hipster series. That just makes me sad. But I, I get it. I get it. Rel, Martin, Zam, Thor, RPG, Gunner, and Absolute, and Ikari. Congratulations to all of you on your shit. Well done. Is Fear Hipster? Um, I really don't think so. Like, I, I, I really, like, I'm not offended by the question, but I also really don't think I am. But I don't know. Different people might disagree with that, I guess. Um... What am I doing? Placing this one and then this one. Hawkeye. So we have, I'm trying to see if there's a way to get both of these on the camera. And I'm not entirely convinced that there is. I mean, that is about, I think that's going to be about as close as I'm going to get. Unless I hold the camera, but then I'll give you all motion sickness anyway. So we have the tartan plate up here, and then we have the sci-fi plate down the bottom. Can we see any of those that might, like, one from the tartan and one from the sci-fi that could work together? I know that's a really weird question, but I have, I'm, I have thoughts. I have thoughts. Probably not. Like these are two very, very different types of designs. T 
top right tartan. So this one and then lower right this one. The other right. Oh, lower right. Uh, this, uh, this one. Sorry. <sighs> oh, my brain was like upper and lower, so the other ones must be switched as well. Uh, yep, yeah, no. So you're talking these ones, like the square one here and this big chunky one up here. Maybe. Maybe. I like the portal looking one. This one. Those could put my complimentary. Yeah, th I'm, that's kind of where I'm thinking, ooh, maybe, maybe. Um, This swirly circly one, I've got a deep green, like a, like a forest green polish. And then I've got this really pale, iridescent, like pastel almost green shimmery polish that when the light hits it just right, it kind of shifts pink. And I did the forest green and then I stamped that shimmery one, the pale one over it with that. And God damn, it looked amazing. This is, year, this is when I first bought the plates. It was one of the first things I did and I was so happy with it. Uh, and then I think I did a feature nail, like this, like the ring finger was the iridescent with the dark green stamped over it to like alternate for that one nail. It was very cool. I was very impressed with myself. Um, <laughs> the squares could be complimentary. You know what? Oh, you know what? I have this beautiful thing. Okay, let's get us some tape. I will show you this on camera in a second. I just want to test this out first. Oh, that was really dodgy. Holy cow. How did I do that that badly? Wow. Okay, I suck. Let's try that again. I'm usually much better at this than that. Um, it makes me very nervous. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Oh no. Uh, acetone, come here. Maybe it wasn't cleaned properly from last time. I'm not sure I've ever used this big chunky one though. gouge out of the nail. I'm so good. God damn it. It's fine. Okay, let's let's try that again. Maybe I just waited too long. It's always a possibility. No, it's still the same place? Possibly. That's all right. It's close enough. We get the gist. We get the general idea. And then...
don't know if it's maybe the colors. Like I get where the squares. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I feel like to get them to work together, it that have to be a lot more precise, and I don't really have the skill to get them to the precisosity as I think I'd want them. Um, but like while we're here. to whoopsie it's cool huh ah <laughs> oh, and half it didn't even bloody stick there's a whole strip there that didn't stick oh actually there was a lot of polish in that ah uh, I see what happened okay I see I see I see I see I see all right I think we're gonna go with the sci-fi. Uh, but I do like that square one that Duke picked, so I think we're gonna go with that. So this is a silicon mat. Um, the idea with this, I mean, obviously you can test stuff out and then if you wanna clean it, it literally just takes tape and you can take it straight off and then it's all on the, how cool is that? Kind of looks like a, a credit card chip, the square one, doesn't it? Um, so it's super, super easy to clean. You can also wipe it down with acetone and that dries super quick as well, but eh, tape's more fun. Um, but also what you can do is you can stamp stuff on here and then you can paint over it with like a quick dry top coat and then you can peel it up off the mat and use it like a sticker use it like a decal and place it carefully exactly where you want it. Like it gives you that extra level of control. I'm very bad at that. Like very bad at that. Uh, but it is a thing that is possible to be done. All right, let's clean this baby off and we'll move her out the way. There you go. And then we'll clean... This off too. I'm just using the like just clean. Yeah. Not having to touch the acetone because I don't want to ruin my nails any more than I've already done that. Uh I go all together. Oh, you like the circle one better. Okay. Alright, let's go with the circle one then. Two votes for circles, so let's go circles. Um, so where Okay, so if I place them, if I place the stamping to be stamped nail on the measures, cool. All right, brilliant. Um, so I'm gonna do this as best I, this is gonna be interesting because this is a speed thing. You don't have to, like, if you go too bloody fast, you're gonna mess it up, but you do need to move with some element of speed. Um, otherwise it will dry and it will not be good. All right, so we're using Hit the Bottle. The shade is Rose Glow Gold. I believe that these guys are an Australian company. Yep, Australian made five free nail lacquer. And this is stamping polish. So the difference between a regular nail polish and stamping polish is that stamping polish has a ton more pigment in it. It's also therefore more expensive. Um, and also if you use it as a regular nail polish, the staining of your hand, your, your nails is not a maybe it's essentially guaranteed. You will stain the hell out of your nails and it will not be a pretty thing. So you put on some polish, you scrape it, you pick it up, and you stamp it. Can you see in there? Thumb's a bit of a hard one just because of the angle of the hand and everything. The rest of them you should be able to see a little better. And then we clean up. Fear has a shiny. Fear has a shiny. 
Fia got the shiny! Fia did get the shiny. On her hand! Is the R2-D2 vibes? Love it. Love it. Alrighty, let's... Oh crap, I left my acetone open. Wow. <gasps> oh my god, no wonder it smells bad in here. If I had knocked that, game over. All this fucking expensive tech, game over. Also, yeah, no wonder I have a headache. Ah, uh, good. Right, so we clean the scraper. There's this stuff on there. We need to jump, get that off. And we clean the plate. We get all the residual nail polish out of the laser etching so that the next blot of nail polish can actually get in there and make the shape we need it to. And it's acetone, so it evaporates super quick. That is yeah. I, is that is the yeah a good thing, dude? <laughs> puck a puck. This is puck a puck. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, <clears throat> that was lots of yelling. I do apologize. It's it's a puck a puck. Scrubby. Once it, once the, um, once this thing gets a little dirtier, it gets a little harder to clean properly. No forerunner city from Halo Origins. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Under, oh crap. I didn't clean the stamper. Whoops. But yeah, the stamper is, because it's silicon again, it's really easy to clean. You just tape it and everything comes off. Stuck to the paper, it's stuck to the tape. Nice and easy. Next finger. Can I speed this up? Maybe. I know that my fingers are messy. We'll deal with that in a second. I tend to like to deal with it when they're all done. Um, just cause it moves a little bit faster that way. What are you doing Stamper? Why are you there? Nice and easy. Yes. Oh my God. Oh my God. Nam. Yep. Nice and easy. No grays. I think I need a new one of these. Ah, uh, where are you? Oh. Yeah, I have bag. <laughs> You, look, I use them a lot. It's really cool. It is super cool. This is what, like, makeup, nail art, cross stitch, knitting. You're creating something out of nothing. And it's freaking cool. Freaking cool. Very awesome. Okay, now it's the other hand. I don't know how well I'm gonna be able to like, but we'll we'll try. We'll try. I mean, it is gonna be my opposite hand anyway, so that's starting off with a disadvantage. Yeah, I completely missed that side of it. 
That's fine. Just ignore it. Good lord. He oh, wow. That was terrible. Okay. <laughs> like it's the thumb. How often do you see my thumbs in my, uh, my nail pictures on Instagram? There's a reason for that. <laughs> There's a reason for that. If I'm going to bugger something up, it's going to be my offhand or my thumbnails. It's fine. Easy to accessorize in a different color for each finger. Accentuate them with a different pattern for the same collection. Yep, yeah, exactly. You can, like, you can get super, super creative. Um, one thing that's super awesome, if you've got the collection for it, like, obviously not everyone's gonna, and that's fine, but if you've got the collection, the, oopsie, <laughs> got some on the mat, that's fine, uh, for, like, you've got a rainbow of stamping polishes, doing your nails either black or white, and then, like, stamping a series of, like, the rainbow across your nails. Super fun. I'm gonna need more new tape soon. But yeah, there's, and there's so many, like if you have a look at the Mohu London website, maybe I need to start adding stamping plates to my wish list. <laughs> but like, I mean, there are so many brands out there. There are like no name brands for stamping plates and stuff. I'm just not sure how much I trust them. Although if they're only a couple of dollars, what's the risk really? It's cheaper than a bottle of uh, vanilla Coke, no sugar, then am I really losing out on anything? But, um, yeah, it's a uh, peekaboo. Uh, I just, I re like, I really trust the Moe brand. Everything I've had from them has been perfection. It's been phenomenal. It's worked beautifully. Um, the only times it's been weird has been user error. Like, they've just all worked super, super well. Um, but they do have more, like, mainstream sort of patterns and stuff, you know, flowers. And um, they've got a whole series of bridal plates. Um, there's also, uh, like, they have a bunch of series of, like, French plates. So, like, it's a French tip but it's funky and artistic. Maybe it's a French tip, but it has like a flower or a vine growing up the nail from the French tip or something. But like, how do you place them? Good Lord, that's outside of my skill level. I just stamp on the nail. As long as it's on there, then I've succeeded. <laughs> but like for nail artists and stuff, this is a phenomenal way to be able to get super intricate patterns without having to practice them for a million years. Where are we up to? This one. So yeah, see, it's it's a speed thing, but you don't have to be bloody Sonic to, you know what I mean? You you can sort of adjust and hang on for a second. And if I'm doing them not for the camera, I'll usually like sort of line them up and then sort of place it and then roll it down the nail, which is why you might be able to see if I don't lock the light. Yeah, can you see just south of that light blob, there's kind of like a little imperfection, like, or just to the to, to my nail side of that blob, there's a little slight imperfection just there. That's a tear in the silicon from me rolling it off the point of my nail and the point cutting into it. <laughs> because I have dagger nails and I love them and I destroy everything with them, including myself and my products. Uh, yeah. Look, they come with a price, but I'm willing to pay it, so we're all good. You can also purchase like sell, uh, uh, replacement silicon bits for them as well. Sometimes, not for all models, but like if you're going with a, a like a name brand company, often they'll have like replacement sets, which is super cool. I feel like I'm saying super cool a lot lately. I wonder what that if that means anything. I believe that this is the last one. It is. Sorry. <laughs> Total obstruction. Nobody cares. It's fine. And that is nail stamping. Alright, I'm gonna 
that's that tape is done. Um, let's clean you up all proper like as much as I can not just that little section of it but the whole damn plate because it's time for you to go to bed brilliant and then the scraper that's as good as that's gonna get Pop the lid back on that so it doesn't dry out because they're not expensive, but they're also not cheap. Um, and all right, there was a little bit there that we can clean up. Not much, but enough. Cool. That little smudge I don't care so much about. That's... Um, you up and stick you into tube and then it goes bop to fill the whole tube and then we put the lid on perfect okay we can pop the stamper away because that's clean the scraper is clean and we still have two plates out so I'll pop the sci-fi one away and the hipster one away now we're not done yet because I'm a mess I am a mess Bridal or bridal. Second one. For brides. Because claws. Fear does have claws. You are correct. All right. How do we clean up? Not with fucking acetone. That's for sure. I do not want to damage these gorgeous nails. Watch, 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 watch. Oh, that one kind of stuck a little bit. Let's try that again. Oh, is that still wet somehow? Oh no, it's just being a pain. That's fine. It's kind of tricky getting in under the camera with this and actually being able to see what I'm doing because this is such a light color and it's metallic. It's not catching the light under there, so I can't see what I'm doing. But essentially, uh, the polish will stick to the tape preferentially over the finger. Except that tiny little bit there that I just can't seem to get. <laughs> um, so that's your easiest way. You can kind of go in with a cotton tip and acetone it up and stuff, but acetone really dries out your skin uh, and it's not very fun. And there's always a risk that maybe you've got too much on it and it oozes, the acetone oozes and it gets onto your nail. The thing, the really tricky thing about the stamped, like the stamp, the design, is that it is such a thin layer of super pigmented polish that even just a touch of acetone will make it run bloody everywhere. Not just that, but top coats. Top coats, a lot of them are designed to like merge layers of polish together to make it a stronger bond and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, oh, that's fine. Um, so a lot of them, when you put a top coat on top of a design, it'll smudge or it'll bleed. Like it'll start spreading outside of its clearly defined barrier. Um, so what I'm going to do after I've tidied up, I have a water-based top coat. Yes, this means if I go wash my hands, it washes off. So what you, what I do... You can wear a water-based top coat by itself if you want to, but I find them to not really last very long. Um, and you, like, 
I experience chipping faster if I don't use an additional top coat. But what I do, I put the water-based top coat on to seal in the design. You are not prepared. Hello, Lucky. How are you going? Welcome on in. How is your stream? What are you up to? Uh, but yeah, what I do, I put on the water-based top coat to seal in the design and then I pop a top coat, top coat, like a regular old one uh, over the top of that. To just kind of seal everything in all good like this is a new type this is a new roller tape i used to have the like the really super not very sticky gift wrap tape which was a lot better because it wouldn't stick to the actual nail very much but this ship this stuff is sticky yo this is um yeah it's causing me some some issues but that's okay i know now I'd had that last roll of gift wrap tape for literally years. I don't even know if they make it anymore. Cause this is this is called gift wrap tape, but it's not the same stuff. It is absolutely not the same tape. Um, I'm gonna grab a new piece because that, the edges are all full of polish. Um, the top coat acts sealant, it does, but the top coat can also, um, uh, the, the top coat can also make it blurry. Yeah, so the, the water, water-based top coat seals everything in where it is and then you can put another top coat over the top of it and it won't have those bleeding smudging icky issues um which is what we don't want because we spent so much effort making this beautiful design how dare it go everywhere and be stupid like that's not fair it's not very nice at all I'm trying to do this under the camera and i keep pulling away from it and i'm very very sorry it's just a very tight squeeze under here which is not fun to do um I'm trying, I uh, promise. And also can grab from underneath the bits as well. Sweet. What is that that is sticking like that? That's what I bloody thought, you little bugger. Where am I? This one. to that maybe yes so there we go all tidied up no more well almost no more polish on my skin it's all just staying on the nails now so uh, let's do this while I try to clean up the other ones um Readers indeed, it's an early birthday show. So lovely, fantastic! Oh, so good. Welcome on, everyone. Four. Wow. Twenty-eight years ago, nineties were last decade. It's been going well. Make me look amazing. Thank you. Look, it's been going okay. We had some technical difficulties, but um, they seem to be long gone now, which is nice. Um, early birthday indeed. Hey, chat. What's your dumbest injury? Safe for work edition. Ah, uh, ooh. I don't know. I I don't. Now that I'm I'm gonna say this and then I'm gonna like yeah. But I don't tend to injure myself very often. I think like I mean, way back early on when I was starting out with cross stitching and stuff, the number of times I rammed a needle up underneath my nail was too darn high. But Beyond that, I think I've done a pretty good job of staying out of trouble. Like, 
I really don't get injured that much. I'm just sick all the time. I think that's the thing. I don't get hurt. I get, I'm sick. Neka Absolute Meaty, uh, like... Martin, Mick, Fade, and Ikari, congratulations to all you on your bonus shit. Just hand stuck in a pool filter box. Oh no. So you just screwdriver to pry it out, unmode it again, you get a casting map for lucky. Uh, we can. Thank you for the prompt there. There we go. Um, I was gonna to burn as I was open up water and drink sugar. I don't want to microwave it. Explode, I got an eat scar. I'm now used as a warning. Oh my god. Oh my god. I mean, I've had, I've had really bad sunburns, but I wouldn't call that like a... I think burning yourself on water is an injury, but getting sunburned isn't, if that makes sense. I don't know. It's, yeah. I, I feel you though. I'm gonna switch to here because I'm doing this. I'm not, I'm not gonna be able to do it under the camera. I'm just too uncoordinated to do my offhand under the camera. Um... I'm a boat propeller. Good lord! Teeth first into a pole and roll. Oh, oh, rel. Oh, no, I'm not sure that's safe for work. Um. <laughs> oh lord! A number of awesome injuries. Cut us off on a claw hammer. How do you do that? That's some kind of magic. This is no longer sticky. What is going on with this? This tape is not good. Maybe my hands are just super dirty. But I feel like that's not the case. Although, I mean, I have been doing like makeup and stuff all stream. So maybe, maybe handling all my hair and the like primers and all that kind of stuff. Maybe that, um, Damn it. So I got, do you see the tape, the blue on the tape? It lifted the side of one of my nails and it's stolen some polish. Um, so the edge of it, you can see is kind of munched now. So it's not like a perfect cuticle line, but it's okay because it's my off hand. So I don't take photos of that hand. It's my dominant hand. I take photos of my non-dominant hand because that's the one that I get to look all pretty and stuff. <laughs> Influencer secrets. No, you're good, said. Um. Exhausted, I'm gonna crash. It was lovely to see you. Lovely to see you. Ah, fantastic, Lucky. Rest well. We'll see you next time. Post button creates purple. Cross ligament rupture playing football counts. Oh, wow. Ouch. That's great, October. Oh. Post button creates purple. Um, the purple lights is a follow. Uh, on, on Twitch. Um, the hosts should do um they go oh right because it's currently green hosts actually go um illidan colors so they go green purple and like a dark color um yeah so it's purple and then green well it's it's dark and then purple and then green but because it's green you're only seeing the purple yeah but raids do the same thing same colors Subs go ashes colors, follows go purple, and bits go the color of the total bit. So if you if you did one bit, they'd go white. Um, if you did a hundred bits, I think it is goes teal or blue or something. Um, but if you did one hundred single bits, they'd show up as white in chat, but they the color represents the total not the individuals yeah it's funky hey that's a lumia stream if you've got a similar setup and you want to do funky shit like that make them respond to events uh i use lumia stream it's not the only thing out there that does it but um i found it really easy to set up and use and it's reasonably priced too like super reasonably priced and just Check the t you'd think, you know, you'd save the most by going for the longest period of time in a lump sum, but just double check the cost per month for each tier. Just, just double check. Always worth checking that kind of stuff. Never assume a company is going to tell you the truth about their pricing structure. Always check it. All right, I'm not going to be able to get the rest of that. It's just not sticking to the tape. 
That's okay. That's close enough for my offhand. So, add this one. All the gross tape. Okay. <laughs> so this is where we're at. Next step. Wow. Yeah. Oh. This is the same brand. Hit to the bottle. And it's uh, their watertight, smear-free top coat. And this is, if you've ever seen nail polish, this is the weirdest textured shit you will ever bloody see. Look at this. It's literally just like water. And it dries in this weird crusty thing on the top. It's really strange. Uh, but you don't need much of it. Um, in fact, if you use too much of it, it goes kind of funky. So you kind of take most of it off the brush and then just sort of get it on there as best you can. Because because it's water-based, if you, like, if you've ever, like, wiped water over, like, an oily surface or whatever and the water kind of bunches up and spreads out almost like a web, it does the same thing. So you just kind of got to get it on there as best you can. And it doesn't, like, with a normal polish, you would absolutely not apply it like this because, good lord, you just ruin the texture. But this is fine. Just sort of get it on there as best you can and don't let it pool anywhere. It's a really interesting kind of, when it catches the light, it looks a bit blue. If you can see puddles of it on your nails, you'll know what I mean. Like, it kind of, it does, see how it kind of pools and it's sort of that blue sort of shade? If it puddles on your nails, take it, like, keep brushing at it until it goes back onto the brush and not on the nail. You don't want it puddling on your nails. And same thing with bubbles, because you shake it, obviously. Um, if if there's bubbles on the brush and then you transfer those bubbles to your nails, um, like, burst them with the brush and just keep brushing until the excess comes off. Um, you don't want it to... I, it just behaves weirdly. It behaves super, super weirdly if you don't do that. It's super weird. I just, I don't understand it myself, but we just, we, we deal with it. It does what it says. Look at this. I'm going at it and there's no smearing. Like, it's just beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay. And now I'm going to do my other hand not under there because, Lord, help me. I can't. And see like a strand of like dried top coat. <laughs> Got it. Um to injuries, we are Jas. Why have you not like where is your bloody contribution? Where um stupidest injuries safe for work edition. Tomato is same as me chemistry set scalpel. Oh wow tour. Oh my goodness. Pressure blasted half my face off. Yeah, he did. I was very angry. Aaron still has the photos from that, right? Jas came approximately half a centimeter away from bursting his eyeball with a pressure washer. Like, he could very well have... He, he was... He is incredibly lucky to not have blinded himself. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, this is this is not me, but this is my serious face. For realsies. I was a very, very angry person that day. <sighs> Jas will be the death of me. So many cans of drinking on the can at the top. Use my finger for the drink. Pull out. Open them back. Oh god! Try that with a can of corn once. Sliced fingers. Oh, oh! How did that happen? Oh, Neko. Hello, Sean. I don't know if they work. Any things as a game, but that would be bad. Oh yes. Was he looking down a barrel of a gurney? No. Jas, if you're there, are you going to tell them the story or are you just going to, like, let them sit with it? Oh, it was six minutes ago. Yeah, he's probably just going to let you sit with it. He might be in the middle of his own games, so that's a, that's a thing. 
Yeah. So this is like the water, the water safe, like the water top coat. It's dry. That's that's good to go. So I'm gonna put a proper top coat on because I don't. I I need to. <laughs> um. What one do I want to use today? I don't want a matte top coat. I'm thinking something shiny. I have. I know. E. Uh, that one, I think I'm pretty sure that's dead. I think I need to check that out. How's this going in terms of use? Yeah, I think we'll go with this one. Oh no. Oh, there's too much stuff over there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna die. <laughs> Um, no, I'm just gonna better work class. Oh god, grabbing steel wool somehow grabbed a single strand instead. Oh, you're about something I don't want to be on the other side of. Yeah, I am. Look. Sometimes. Is this gonna be. Yeah, I reckon this will be alright. So. I don't really need more than that. This one's starting to dry out a bit, so it's kind of a little bit thicker, but that's kind of what I want. There's something about a top coat that just kind of visually brings everything together. Like when it looks like it's a, it's when it looks like it's nail polish on top of another type of nail polish, but then you put a top coat on it and it all just becomes like one design. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's something magical. <laughs> this is a top coat that's nearly empty, so I'm going to have to kind of go in there with both hands to tilt the bottle and get how much I need out of it. Um, so this might take me a little while, but I don't think, for some reason, I don't think you're going to be upset with that. But yeah, because I've done the watertight top coat, I can kind of be a little more forceful. With the, like, like, look at the difference between those two, for example. There's just something extra with the index finger. I, I can't quite put my finger on it, but it just, it almost like boosts the vibrancy or something. It just, it just does something. I don't know. But it's, uh, and, but I mean, it's also protective, right? It's also protective. So there's really no reason to not use a top coat. It's well worth it. Doing stuff like this under camera is just, it is a very different experience. This is like I'm developing a whole new skill set. I swear to God. Let me just smooth that back out again before it like. Yeah, this one's almost like I'm almost out of this bottle. And I'm fine with that because I have entirely too much. I've got too many base coats, I think. I think I've got top coats I think I'm mostly okay with. But uh, I have a lot of base coats. Uh, a lot of base coats. I need more. Uh, I need another top coat or two. But I do have um, my Seshvite. But I'm trying to use up my other ones before I go back to using my Seshvite. Um, Search Reed's beautiful. It just works so bloody well. It's, it's just, it's just. <laughs> High def was standard def. It really kind of feels like that. Like it, it, there's something, there really is something different. Like, yeah, yeah. It's super cool. Super cool. <laughs> Makes it pop. It's the hero of the dish. Oh my God. Nam, I love it. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah, so I have literally like this much left in this bottle. Like the, the brush only just sits inside it. 
but I wanna, I wanna like, so I kind of you know, angle the brush down the bottom and kind of pick it up and rotate it, pick up as much polish as I can, and then, yep, onto the nail. This is my non-dominant hand, so bugger the camera. Ooh. Did I smudge that just now, or was that smudged before? I think it was smudged before. That's okay. It is also my offhand, so I don't really care. It's just kind of frustrating when you put effort into something and then it just doesn't, you know? I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do for Pax Nails. Because I will probably do them in Melbourne, bring my polish and my kit and stuff down. Not all of it, <laughs> but like maybe a couple bottles and then like sit down with my mum and do our nails. Like if I could, if she'd let me stamp her nails, I reckon she'd have a blast with that. She'd, I think she would absolutely love having like mandalas on her nails. Purple. Pale purple with dark purple mandalas. Fiamma Mr. Purple, what duplicate helix is to green? Just, just saying. I think I did all of them. I don't know how I play would call that, but it is my off hand. It's my non-dominant hand. <laughs> I'm really like, look at that. This the curl there is just ah, oh, it's beautiful. So here we are. Sinopia eyeshadow palette from Mellow Cosmetics. The eyeliner, the blush, the brow pencil, also all from Mellow. Hair curls from Wylera. And then nails because fear felt like it. How did, did we, did, was this worth the embers? Was it worth the contributions? And then pick me up. <laughs> <laughs> Dupe. Oh my god. Are there, okay, are there any mounts that like fit this color scheme? The orange and the blue. If you were to call this a mount makeup, what mount would it be? It's good. Thank you, Apathy. They are, they are like absolutely super awesome. Come on. You know you want to, camera. Just... It's not gonna, it's not gonna focus. There you go. <laughs> Better. Because that's an old, ba uh, like an old polish for the top coat. It's gonna take forever to dry, but that's okay. I just won't touch anything for a little bit. I'm really happy with that design. You guys picked super awesome. You did really well. So yeah, this one feels like it's smudged down the bottom a little bit, but I think that happened while it was stamping rather than... Oh, and I've also left the cuticles a total mess, I just realized. But yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with that. That's worthy of the gram, I reckon. Yes, Mellow and Wylera. Do the things. Get yourself some discounts. I guess the blue motherboard. So does she, but that's how awesome it is. Ah, uh, Metal Kitty you can change the color of. Ah, oh, the, um, the Saber Cat. Saber Cat? When low the river's edge. When L low. Mount. Oh, craft mount. When low the river's edge. Oh, maybe, but I'd probably reverse the colors. It'd be a whole lot more blue and probably a paler blue. 
Um, was it Saber Cat? Was that what it was called, or is it? No, I got it wrong. Mechano Cat. Mechano. Oh, right, of course, there are all of these. Mechano Cat. So, the default color is black. You've got Fireball Red, Copper Trim, Big Old Bronze, Overload Orange, Lemonade Steel, Mechagon Gold, Fell Mint Green. Battle torn blue. Look, there are a couple of colors in there that would work well, but it's um, none of them. It's like the, they're not together. They're not together. You gotta take some selfies and put it now before after thing you to put on socials. Yeah. Two Lego. Blue shadow pan tiger. Blue. Shadow. Enter. Blue Shadow Pan Riding Tiger. Closer. There's a lot of like slate gray on that though, hey. Hmm, it's not very blue. Not very blue for a blue mount, hey. Not unusual lipstick. Yeah, you don't know about makeup, it'd be switched. Purple Mechanostrata. Purple Mechano. Wait, is there a purple mechano strata? Black battle strata, blue mechano strata, green ice blue mechagon mechano hog, red rusty swift green swift white swift yellow turbo unpainted vicious and white. No, there's no purple ones. Um, tiger itself is white. Interesting. Maybe it's just a bad angle on the picture I was looking at. It's not yet implemented, and its future is uncertain. Oh. Well, that's it. Like, even on. On Warcraft mounts, it shows mounts that are not in the game. But maybe it doesn't show mounts that have never been implemented. Never. Oh no, there's never implemented section here. Oh my god, there was a purple noodle. Spring Wildling. This mount is not yet implemented and its future is uncertain. It exists in the game database. There's been no. There's a fucking purple noodle, guys. This mount appeared earlier in the patch 9.1 test database, but was sadly then removed. But it's gorgeous. How dare you? And we do. We've got autumn, summer, and winter. Where the hell is. Why? I'm so angry. This, this is, look at this beautiful, wait, wait. Look at this beautiful beast and tell me you're not angry it's not in the game. I'm so pissed. Yeah, the, the yaks. It's so gorgeous. I'm now officially pissed. <laughs> And the flare core infernal. That's beautiful. Storm crow. Mm. Oh yes. Storm crow would be gorgeous. Yeah, I was just looking at the Fire Plume Phoenix, but it's flagged as a ground only mount, and it's also not nearly fiery enough to be called Fire Plume. Um, 
I mean, the what appears to be the mount special with the explosion. Yeah, okay. But like, I don't know. I'm... Nah. But it's it's um, uses the same model as the Sapphire Skyblazer. Tempestuous Sky Stallion, on the other hand. Yeah. Stone card looks fancy. E. <sighs> I'm just so angry about that beautiful wildling. Like, out of all the mounts there, that is the one that makes... Like, why is that not in the game? It is freaking beautiful. And it would be nice to complete the set. But, I mean, we still do have Season 4. We've got Season 4 coming, so... Maybe they'll add in some more anima purchasable collectibles or something. Oh, excuse me. Mm. So. Did we enjoy today's stream? This has been super lovely and chill. I've I've really enjoyed this. <laughs> Toads, is there anything you know? Of course, apathy, but that's okay. I mean, there is always the vods. Always the fuds. There are a lot of unused, like, um, skins as well. Like, so many more unused skins. Like, art files that are in there, but have never even been attached to anything. No names, no nothing. Ugh. Oh my god. Fawn and Orange Arden Toad. Like, I'm sorry, this just looks a little bit ridiculous. It's super cool looking, but also, like, excuse me, what? Oh, there's also a red wildling. In the in the art, there's blonde, brown, grey, and red that are all unused. That purple one is still just ridiculous, though. And so many horses! Holy shit, that's hilarious! Oh my god! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What is this, and why can I not have it as a mount? Excuse me. Excuse me. That is freaking gorgeous. Um, hello, Crom. Doing well, thank you. How are you? How are you? Right, dude? Look at that. Look at that. That is amazing. Should be a 660. It's not in game, Sam. It's not even connected to a, a mount file. It's just a, an art piece in the game that is flagged as being a mount, but it's not actually a mount. Which is why I'm so pissed. <laughs> I want it. Like, so many of these, like, so many of these I would absolutely just go and get. Like, screw everything else, we're going to get that, you know? Like, that's happening. Oh, the purples are so vibrant. Look at this beautiful, this is a purple vulpin and it is just gorgeous. Like the glow on that, oh, oh honey. Blue rune saber. Pink crane. They just stand out so, like, Oh, you know? Mm. 
jump off the page. Absolutely beautiful. Blue Hippogriff. Of course, yep, the Storm Crow. This. Look at that one. That one ending in a 583. Holy cow. That is beautiful. That is absolutely gorgeous. That. That rivals Ashes. That 5831, that rivals Ashes. And you know how strongly I feel about my Ashes. You just heard that twice. That is a beautiful bird. Um, so what did she say? 1024. Oops. Equals 1024. <laughs> it's a horse. That's for sure. Um, excuse me. When I've got that one. Yeah, I've got that one. Order of Embers Exalted. I got that just recently. Well, see, purple was my favorite color until, no, I don't like Long Forgotten Hippogriff. It looks like it's been sitting in the sun for too long. The colors are faded. I just, I'm not a fan of it. Um, but I mean, like, I know there are a lot of people who absolutely adore it and that's totally okay. Like my, my dislike for it does not affect, like it, the mount itself is fine. It just, I, I, I don't like it. Um, personally. It's because it's long forgotten. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, Zam, Ali, Martin, Absolute, Rel, Landar, Neke, and Meeting. Congratulations to all of you on your ownership. Well done. Good job. But no, I note the pattern. I like vibrant purple and glowy. <laughs> like, but this is like, purple was my favorite color before I discovered red. Um, like red was always, you know, a color of anger and all that kind of stuff uh, when I was growing up. But also like my birthstone is an amethyst, as is my mother's and her favorite color is purple. And so she'd buy purple things for me because she liked them and I was her child. And so she would buy clothing and stuff for me and it was quite often purple. And all my pencil cases and my lunchbox and all that kind of stuff was all purple because it was her, like her favorite color that kind of rubbed off on me, you know, um, which is fine. Like it was not a forced thing. As soon as I decided that my color, my favorite color was no longer purple, she would buy me all the red stuff. Like it was totally okay. Um, there was no kind of weird stuff. I just want to make really, really clear that my mother was not forcing her favorite color upon me. Good. Where are we clear? Wonderful. Um, but there is just, there is something about purple. Um, and it's probably that association. Like I love my mother so, so, so very much. Um, she is one of my favorite humans, uh, always has been, probably always will be. And I associate her with the color purple, you know? So it's, I, I reckon that there's that kind of, yeah. Uh, but yeah, like purple is also just such a powerful color to me. Um, and I mean, I guess, you know, we have that association, like purple is the color of royalty and stuff like that as well. Cause way back when purple was like started being used as a dye, the, the dye was exceptionally expensive. And so only the, the most wealthiest of wealthy people could ever have it, which was royalty. So purple became the color of royalty, but it's not really that either. I, I'm like... I don't really care about royalty. So it kind of, yeah, I don't know. 
Um, purple things often leap, leap out on a, off a page as well. When you're looking at pages and pages of creatures, the brightly colored ones are the ones that are gonna jump out at you. And a lot of the time those ones are like, they're glowy and purple. Um, so it's like Mr. Seven, ah, hey, Blast are doing really well. Doing really well, about, about to wrap it up, actually. About to wrap it up. It has been uh, a mess of a stream with issues, with tech issues and stuff like that, but we did makeup. We did the hair and we did nails and I demonstrated stamping and, and talked about all my little tips and tricks and stuff along the way. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it despite the kerfuffles in the middle there. Um, watching the VODs back will be hell for some people, but hopefully I, I am catching, I'm catching up slowly but surely catching up on, on VODs on YouTube. So we can only hope that we'll get there. Only hope that we'll get there. Um, yeah, of course I can. Absolutely, Blaster. Give me just a second. Uh, boop. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> this is where I, I did a lot of it under the camera, but um, some of it I had to do up here because, you know, dominant hands and things like that. But um, that's how we, that's where we got to. Um, so there you go. Particular pieces. See, now, well, there you go. You go, I knew something like that. Stunning. I'm pretty happy with it. This is, so this is um, uh, Ciate... Palm Springs is the blue that I've used. Isn't that just the most, it's oh, so pretty. Uh, and then I used Hit the Bottle. Um, this is a stamping polish, uh, which is what the, the design is. Um, and it's in Rose Gold Glow. Um, there seems to be some kind of pigment sticking to the bottle over here. So let me just see if I can um, like get it moving again so you can see the proper color, but I, I don't think I'm gonna be able to. It is, it's kind of weird the way that it sticks to the, um, you can kind of see through the middle there. It's, it's not as silvery as it looks in the bottle. It's a it's a really gorgeous kind of rose gold shade. Um, there you go. You can see all the, ignore the silver, but um, all that, that rose gold there, that's the, the color it is. Um, and yeah, I did a whole full face of makeup with um, a beautiful palette that, from a company that I'm affiliated with and did my hair with a, a curler with the, the wireless amazing and again another affiliated company so yeah it's just kind of hair makeup and nails stream i'm pretty happy with it it's a gorgeous i'm pretty i'm i'm stoked with the i i'm really happy with how they turned out especially trying to do it underneath the like the camera is very very close so it like trying to get in there with the it, it just look it was a bit of a mess sometimes but hey they turned out okay the metallic shine yeah so the um i mean all of both of those polishes are metallic but then also having the top coat over the top just make gives them that extra glossy kind of shininess yeah definitely lovely i love the lipstick ah awesome uh it's from l'oreal it was a limited edition one unfortunately but the shade's called rebellion and i quite like it a bit because um i did the the eyeshadow is Eddie's ones and we used Brick, this one, Cinnamon, this one, and then Blue Moon, uh, being that blue in the outer corner there. And uh, when we're like, okay, what well, lipstick? Everyone was kind of like, oh, this is, and I'm like, actually, I do have some blues. Pulled them out, did some swatches, which is why my back of the hand looks uh, bruised. It's not, it's just like dark lipstick. And uh, yeah, popped this on. It has started to rub off a bit on the inside, uh, but I've been, I had food and I've had bubble tea and it's just been like, yeah, so. Yeah. Mmm. Mellow. I was saying, oh, thank you. I mean, it is it is partially because of the product, of course. Um, but yeah, Mellow Cosmetics. That's that's the company. Um, and that cinnamon shade is just absolutely gorgeous. You, the camera does not do it justice. It is so metallic. Like it is beautiful. Um, the and the blue actually blended really well. It blended a lot better than I thought it would which is great. So it doesn't have those kind of harsh, like, oh my God, what is that? There's a line there kind of deal. Hi, um, ah, <laughs> Blaster, thank you so much for your Prime Gaming sub. Much appreciated. Hope you're having a lovely evening. Bubble tea, all the affiliate programs today. Look, I gotta pay for my dentistry somehow. Gotta pay those dentists. And I pay, oh, I, by the way, thank you so much to everyone who has been purchasing Humble Bundles this month. Uh, I got a payout today and that's gone 
straight into the dental fund and it it was not small it was not small so big huge thank you to everybody who has been using my my humble link uh, and who has been following the links to different bundles that i've been posting in the affiliates channel and um and adjusting that slider to, to give more money to fear i look i'm not ever going to encourage that because i mean the developers deserve cash the charities deserve cash um but i i really really truly appreciate um the like intentional helping of me by like either seeking out my affiliate link to make sure that i get a kickback from you purchasing something like it really it means a lot like i'm not sure you guys will ever quite understand exactly what it means but like the fact i get paid great i get money that's awesome money makes the world go round i need money brilliant but also the fact that you enjoy my content enough and feel that i deserve to be supported particularly financially there's a lot like there are so many creators and artists and and uh, of, of all different you know who work in so many different mediums and people will go and download music for free they'll go download tv shows and movies for free they'll they'll go grab art off google image search and all this kind of stuff um and never actually contribute to the creator's well-being if that makes sense um so the fact that you are directly doing that when you use these affiliate links and stuff i'm, I'm not asking you i'm never gonna again never gonna ask you to go out of your way to buy something just to get me a commission that's silly but if you are looking for a product in a particular field and i happen to have an affiliate program associated with the item that you're trying to purchase actually seeking out that link and using it to make sure that i like that's it's just mind-blowingly awesome so thank you to everyone who has been doing that over the last god knows how long um you have genuinely made such a huge positive difference in my life you, like you genuinely have i wouldn't be able to afford getting this dental stuff done if it weren't for you guys it's as simple as that necessary medical stuff let's not put that on medicare um but you know that's <laughs> that's another discussion entirely uh mrs jamie we catch not absolutely blasted but you can also check out the vod there's always a vod uh i mean for partners they last for 60 days but within that 60 day period i should have it up on youtube as well so you can definitely go and peruse the back catalog there if you would like if you're looking for something to fill the silence uh, it was oh fantastic i'm so pleased to hear that dude wonderful news she wouldn't download her fear i mean zam does all the time <laughs> just saying just saying um <laughs> downloading the clips to make them line then uploading them in discord and stuff it's hilarious oh lord all right uh let's find someone to raid I am a sleepy. Can you confirm downloaded Benny Fears? I know. I know you have. It's hilarious. Um, I have one more of these. So if you do have any, like, oh! I am grateful. Well, thank you so much. Cricket has sent us straight through. I mean, yes. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. That is so generous of you. Oh my goodness. You too, last you too, but we are gonna find somebody to raid. Someone that I can I can recommend for your viewing pleasure. Uh let me just find them. Oh wow, no one's online tonight. What the hell's going on? Um that's interesting. Oh, that's alright. The the one the person that is online is. Yeah, let's go do that. Um, my new charity stream. It is, Ali. It is. Monday is the charity stream. Um, I can do... Wait a minute. Let's... Boom! St uh, Sunday. Transmog hunting. Ludopraiser challenging. Maybe not the Ludopraiser challenging. It's... Are we doing raids? Give me a second. Let me just... I don't even know what I'm doing, you guys. Look, it's just... 
I do need to go through and update my data again. Because when do I not have to do that? But I believe it's Blackwing Lair. No, it's Gruels. We're going through and knocking out Gruels. Oh, this is going to be fantastic. We're going to finish a whole last raid. With the number of characters I have and how quick it is to run a Gruels Lair, we are going to finish Gruels across all 12 classes. We have to. Come on. That's the goal. We're going to knock out Gruels forever and a for, for, like forever and ever. It's decided. And y'all are going to join me because we're all batshit together and it's great. All right. <laughs> um, Transmog hunting and Gruels Lair on Sunday. Mount Farm Monday. Uh, Mount Farm Monday, but charity stream. We are raising funds for War Child UK. They are a charity who uh, provide services to children who are affected by war. They have a large presence at the moment in Ukraine, but they also have a, a like slightly smaller presence in a bunch of other war zones across the world. They do have different wings of of War Child. They have like different uh, like arms of the satellites of the the charity across the world but the warchild uk is the specific one that we're fundraising for and because there's a uh, during the month of may there is a special thing uh it's it's some kind of giving push they're trying to get people to give more to charity um and so any donations that come from the uk to warchild uk via the tiltify campaign that i run on the monday uh will be matched pound for pound by the UK government. Any UK resident who contributes, their donation will be doubled by, like the, the government will, will match it, um, which is bloody awesome. Uh, and so we're gonna try to do the best that we can for that. Um, I know that that's where the calendar finishes um, for May, but June, June, Wednesday's a day off. I don't do it often, but I'm, I'm looking at trying to take like a day off a month sort of thing moving forward just because especially now that I'm picking up an extra day at work I'm probably gonna bloody need it not gonna lie um so when uh, Wednesday the 1st of June I'm having a night off um so that'll be a day off but Friday so a week from today the 3rd of June we're gonna do a toy hunting stream you guys asked for it it was a challenge we had a community challenge for it and it succeeded so it's going to be a toy hunting stream uh, a week from now. So there you go. There you go. Uh, it is. Good night, Nam. Rest well. Smashing goals. Yes. Yes. A day off. I know. Not from Rage, you ain't. Uh, yes, we are. Yes, we absolutely fucking are. If you check Discord, you will see that I have declined Raid for next Wednesday. <laughs> uh, gotta have your own time. Indeed. Indeed. Mm-hmm. Yep. Your time is important. It is indeed. Absolutely. Alrighty. Sometimes you just need to disconnect and not be online for a day. <laughs> Thank you, dupe. Look at that. Grab your copy paste. If you do not have the Fiamma hype emote, either because you are not a subscriber or because you haven't grabbed, uh, you haven't unlocked using your channel points, either which are totally okay, you can still copy and paste the entire message, pop it in chat, delete Fiamma hype and replace it with your favorite happy hypey celebratory emote and then hit send and send it to Hydrax who is currently doing some keys with viewers, in fact, and uh, Give him some love. Hydrax is a lovely guy. And I hope that you'll enjoy giving him a look and a watch and all that kind of stuff. And I will see you on Sunday. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being with me during this uh, unusual stream and for sticking with me through all the, the technological crap. I'm I'm very sorry about, I, I still don't know what's going on, but I'm gonna see if I can't do some of it. The problem is with those kind of issues, it's really hard to figure out what's going on unless you're in the middle of it, like unless you're in the thick of it. So look, I, I, I have no idea. I, I'm speechless, but I appreciate, I appreciate you so, so much for staying, sticking with me and, and getting through it with me. Um, and yes, contribute your embers if you haven't already. You're running out of time, like five seconds left to do that. Rest well, take care of yourselves, be nice to each other, and I'll see you on Sunday. All the love. Mwah.
Bye, guys. <laughs>